It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Thorat's here. Mary Jo Foley's here, and it's a good thing <laughs> Ignite is going on. We we covered the keynote yesterday. I have questions, but you know what? Paul and Mary Jo have answers next. Podcasts you love from people you trust. This, this is Twit. Twit. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Thorat and Mary Jo Foley, episode 714 for Wednesday, March 3rd, 2021. A licensable moment. It's time for Windows Weekly. This what are you laughing already? He's laughing already. I said it's time for Windows Weekly, and that Paul Thorat guy, he starts laughing. Paul Thorat, Thorat.com. His first ring daily, like the big show, and this is just the thing you just kind of do because, you know. Yes. I just kind of show. I mail it in when I have a show. Sure. Yep. Therot.com. You should become a premium user a member because it's really worth it. There's some great stuff uh, at the site. Of course, lots of free stuff, too, by Paul and his crew. His books are at leanpub.com. The field guide to Windows 10 still going strong and some secret project Paul still has yet to tell us about oh, um, yeah. on the way. Uh, Mary Jo Foley, she writes for ZDNet at allaboutmicrosoft.com. And between the two of them, they can explain what the hell happened yesterday. <laughs> We're going to try. It's going to be more like between the one of them in this case. I... <laughs> they can explain Guy La Liberté and the uh, virtual reality Burning Man we saw yesterday. Hello, guys. Hello. Now, did you cover this live? Yeah. So what it, it was okay. interesting, Actually, right? At least. Yeah, but I, it was weird. So, because <laughs> off, you know, off camera, our editorial mm -hmm. team had a debate, and I said, you know, it's Satya Nadella. Uh, the, oh, about whether yeah. to do it, whether to whether to stream it yeah. live. You know, I mean, people yeah. can watch it. It's not like if we don't stream it, nobody will right. see it. It's just whether should is it so important that we should cover it as a news event? And we said no. And then I talked to you guys last week, and then Mary Jo sent me an Whoa. email saying you should cover it. Um, okay, good. And well, I think the thing it. that really put me over was Alex Kipman, right? And the thought that, well, this is the fifth anniversary of Hololens, maybe Hololens three. Plus, it's been quiet on the Hololens front. I went out to Barcelona yeah. two years ago for Hololens two, and then I'm not yeah. saying they haven't announced anything since then, but it's been real quiet. And yes. Windows Mixed Reality, even more so, yeah. I would say. Yep. So it, w it was completely reasonable to say, oh, this is going to be an yeah. event that we should cover. How do you feel about? Cirque and I also Soleil, knew. <laughs> no, I, no, I knew. I knew Pokemon was going to be in it, and I'm uh, like, we'll want to see this. That was fun. John Hankey, <laughs> the CEO of Niantic. Uh, yeah. It was the weirdest thing, though. I mean, it was it was, it was. Samsung weird. I yeah, agree it with was 100. percent Yep. It was. Um, and you know, I, like today, I saw a video that Microsoft Mechanics did about about what they announced, and I'm like, you know what? I don't want to say this should have been the keynote, but this should have been the keynote. <laughs> oh, no. Well, a better, in the sense that it was a much better description. It, it's clearer, right? right? Clearer what Microsoft meshes. Because if you went back and looked at the stories that came out yesterday from people who are pre briefed, there are no two stories that say the same thing, even remotely, yeah. right? Like, <laughs> That's pretty funny. So I'll well, tell you what fair. my uninformed uh, impression is. Yeah, okay. it's oh, a it's a a potpourri, a melange, if you will. All right, you're going. To, you're heading in the right direction. You're getting warmer. <laughs> of, a, yeah, of a bunch of existing <laughs> Microsoft technology. Oh, yes. Okay. By the way, nailed it. Very nice. Yeah, Very you nice. did. Yep. Designed yep. to serve the. I think that the one thing I said during you're almost the event, you were almost you were almost I'm so close. Depending on what you, you say next, you yeah. might nail it. Yeah. I, I said during the event, if they had announced this last March, they would have had a year of pandemic to exactly. really get into it. Yeah. That's but true. I feel like they're announcing something for basically socially distanced businesses or distanced uh, offices that is going to be less important. But, you know, maybe That's they're exactly right. Maybe they're, right. they're hedging their bets and saying. You know, here, here, so, by the way, isn't, going back so to v, the Viva thing that they announced last couple of weeks ago is very similar uh, in, in construct. Uh, existing technologies repackaged, given a brand, obviously making improvements and adding new stuff. But by and large, it's something that sort of was already, you know, they were already kind of heading in that direction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I, Mary Jo and I were talking about this earlier, and I kind of said um, that uh, mesh is to hull lens as Viva is to Microsoft 365. 
Okay. It's a, it's what I call a licensable moment, yeah. <laughs> if you will. Yeah. Right. Which is the third thing I was hoping you were going to land on right there, which is, um, <laughs> we, we have a, we don't just give things a name to give them a name. We give things a name so we can put them in a ledger somewhere and <laughs> charge you for that yeah. thing. It does yeah. seem like yeah. this is what Microsoft has been doing lately, which is taking products or yeah. uh, uh, tools yep. and creating, like, that's what Microsoft, what's what Dynamic 365 yeah. was in the first place, right? Right. And yep. now they're taking Right, that. taking things and packaging them in yeah. a new way, but right? Yeah. The <laughs> yeah. question still remains. What is this thing? What is it? Okay. So I'm going to give it a shot. Um, I always like to look at architectural diagrams because for me, that really makes things more solid in my own mind. So if you look at their architectural diagram for what mesh is (laughs) on the bottom, it's all the, all the infrastructure technologies we know and love, right? It's the graph, of course, it's Microsoft identity, you know, so that you can sign in with active directory, Azure active directory or your Microsoft account. It's, identity services, it's billing, it's audio and video. That's the whole bottom, right? Then on top, you've got these pieces they've started to announce already that they've renamed and repackaged. So spatial maps, I think, is Azure Spatial Anchors, which they announced two years ago at Mobile World Congress. Then you've got holographic rendering, which I think is the thing that used to be called Azure Rendering. Um (laughs) Uh, (laughs) the two new pieces are there's this immersive presence piece and then there's this multi-user sync so the idea of mesh is it's a platform that you can use across all different kinds of devices phones pcs tablets even third-party non-microsoft virtual reality headsets and hololens and it looks like this I know. Hopefully not all the time. <laughs> um, no. There's uh, no, Alex Kipman standing right. underwater. Yeah. We all live right. in... Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what the chat room said. They said, it's Ringo Starr. <laughs> yep. Where's the blue yeah. meanies? Yeah. But you're right. I think so, the architectural diagram yeah. does describe it much It does, much right? Better. I agree with And you. then on top is the thing that everybody is needs to make this all work, the SDK, right? You always need a software development kit. So they're trying to get third-party developers and Microsoft developers to take this mesh SDK and meshify their apps, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's what they're trying so to do. <laughs> that's kind of interesting because it brings it back to the original, I don't, I don't want to call it an issue, but the thing with HoloLens, which is here's this thing we created. Let's see what developers do with it. You know, right? And yeah. and uh, by the way, I will say by and large that actually kind of did work out with Hololens. I think by the time mm-hmm. Hololens two came out, in addition to the technical improvements to the product itself, which are uh, yeah. significant, um, we finally saw these use cases start appearing that made sense. Right. You know, right? Um, and so maybe that will happen here. Well, yeah. it, prob- it probably will. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Microsoft you know- Bob pops up and says, "It looks <laughs> like you're trying to meshify your apps." Thanks to Mesh Potato in the chat room for that. Yeah. The part I didn't I didn't think they nailed in the keynote was examples of scenarios that you really need to have a bunch of avatars and holograms sitting around a table and interacting, right? Like it's like we could do Windows Weekly in in the mesh environment if we wanted to. But do we all need to be at the same table in some kind of a an abstract form? No. But They're betting, right? though, like with companies like Salesforce <laughs> and Spotify and Twitter and Google and all these companies saying you don't have to come to work. They're they're yeah. multinationals. I think they're betting that the new. Well, I think uh, the the future is hybrid, basically. Yes. Right. Uh, right. But do you do you couldn't you guys just use Skype or Teams yeah, or Zoom course. to do that? Way, uh, like, why do you need people, cash, right? Be, well, because uh, the people who have an actual AR or MR headset. We'll have a different experience. So, so you mentioned it will right. work across all these different device types, including mobile. If you're on a phone and or it, an and, iPad, and by the way, whatever, it does not require, uh, you know, yeah, I mean, uh, special hardware, right? That's what. They but said. you can, you'll, what you're getting is a two D. Yeah. You're just getting a two D, yeah. just like we are right. doing right now on on uh, yeah. on Skype or whatever. Right. Yeah. So, but right. if you have this hardware, you're getting yeah. a more. I, I think what they're trying to say is it's something that bridges the gap between truly physically being together in the same room and this flat yeah. screen Zoom fatigue problem that we have now. The only problem I have with it is, well, first of all, nobody has these things. But even those that do, it's, it's you know expensive, blah, blah, blah. They're 3000 bucks, right? They're not. 
and they're, yeah, they're uncomfortable use a, a still. Headset, they're not comfortable. Well, you could use Nokia. Yeah, it's like <laughs> a Darth Vader mask. I mean, it's still, it's. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you thought you hated meetings now, when do you have right. to wear That's, a headset? Wait till you do it in 3D. Yeah. yeah. No, but, <laughs> right. you know, so yeah. in this Microsoft Mechanics video that I talked about, they show a few scenarios where you actually would need to be in the same room physically. Like they showed an example of a, a 3D model of a pipe and they're like, this part is broken right here. So if you're trying to show that on Skype or on Teams or whatever, it's hard, right? But if you have a 3D model and you're all around it and you can point to the a little crack in it there and everybody can look at it, I'm like, okay, there's why you need <laughs> to be in the same room. Flashing on his eyes. Looks like he has <laughs> devil eyes, yeah. Yeah, okay, that, was that. that was a tough look. Um, they did not <laughs> announce any changes to HoloLens, really, right? The technology is right. unchanged. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. Here's the yeah. pipe. And it is, seriously, right? it's, been two, it's been two years. Yeah. Right. But see, yeah. if you're in this HoloLens. scenario, this guy, he's got a broken pipe. Need somebody to help him fix it. But you have to show exactly where on the pipe it's broken. So if you're trying to show that on a picture, you know, a 2-day picture, it's harder. Then you're all around it and you're like zeroing in on it and looking at it together, right? Did it bother you that, that people view. doing in this environment had no arms and no legs? And just hands. And just yeah. hands. But then the, the people, yeah. the real people had legs and hands. Yeah. And it's just, it's a, I right. guess if you're, if you're a participant from distance, you're in one of these weird 3D things. And if yeah. you're, if you're this guy, <laughs> <laughs> you're all alone in uh, in meat space and uh, right God, so God the, the way this right right now there isn't even support for people doing holoportation which is what alex kipman and james cameron what? were doing like, they don't even do no, that no not yet right like so it's these avatars that's what's there today and holoportation is coming well, later that was another thing that bugged me and this is kind of ancillary but as they have often, in fact, always done with HoloLens, they show something that doesn't, yeah. that isn't exactly. the same as the experience. Right. And right. it so looked he, to I me will, as we watched it that that Kipman and Hanky or Kipman and James Cameron shot something on a green screen ahead of time, mm -hmm. right. and then laid it in. I mean, this is not yeah. what this is not what HoloLens yeah. is going to yeah. do. But it's not. No, that's not yet. just showed is uh, a you know an AR experience. You're standing in a room. You're interacting with holograms and in this case some of them are holograms right. representing other people right and yeah yeah they're, they're cartoonish and but it's you know v1 yeah. i mean i that's it the is. main thing it's v1 i mean this is like it atari is. 2600 yeah. compared to mm -hmm. call of duty and someday you know yeah, yeah, down the yeah. road this will be the, but amazing by the way the other thing i think that is i think the thing that is maybe the best news for this platform is you know because i hear from people on uh, twitter and they say well this is all good and everything, but when Apple comes out with whatever they're doing a year from now, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, yeah, except, you know, Apple does things for Apple. You know, Apple's yeah. stuff is only going to work on Apple's devices. Right. This is cross-platform, yep. you know, so. It won't be like this. Um, it won't be like this. This is, Microsoft is doing the the, the enterprise version of whatever this right. is. Right. Apple yeah, will, not, it will absolutely yep. not be doing that. Right. right. I was happy they played up the enterprise stuff throughout the keynote because even though like the fun stuff is the Pokemon and you know all the what, consumer what part of the underwater of world said enterprise to you was it the whale that swam by <laughs> one point? <laughs> no, but all the stuff <laughs> Kipman was talking about at the beginning was yeah. all enterprise, and I'm like, that's the true audience for this, right? <laughs> it, well, by the way, it is, and that's what that's sort of what I meant earlier when I said they were looking for yeah. a use case, and then they found it, and it was in these vertical yep. markets that are part of the commercial right. market for sure. Yep. yep. Here's uh, Alex, I guess, building the set for this, or yeah, they were building the set for how this. They never work. show. It's interesting because they never showed the set, uh, right. so we never the really knew what the real really world looked, looked yeah. like uh, at this, mm -hmm. which is kind of yeah. kind of interesting. Right. Plus, you were watching it in alt space VR, basically, right? Yes. And that, <laughs> so that also made it weird. Whether too. you wanted to or not, that even the two D right. experience was was alt was yeah. this was alt spaced with yeah. whales and yeah. I think it got a little, like you said, Samsung trippy, but I think the essence of it was good. Um, and I think they the, need to show like these kinds of scenarios that are more boring, but real. Industrial scenarios. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But that's, it's also not new. Are. I remember we went to uh, Ford's uh, Dearborn facility mm -hmm. 10 years ago and in, and went around. and went to the design 
studio and they're wearing VR headsets to so design say, cars. Uh, Ford, if I'm not mistaken, is one of the adopters of this stuff. And yep. a lot of the demos that you see, whether it's a car maker or anything else they've been showing, is there'll be the one guy with the hall lens on right. and he's you know, describing the work that he did to others, but the other people have less expensive uh, Windows Media, uh, Windows um, Mixed Reality headsets on. Right. And that allows them to see what the guy's talking about in that 3D space and walk around it, but, um, you know, not interact with interact, it. can't interact. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Yeah, not in the same You're right. Way. There's a lot of uses. Right. I mean, Google Glass is being used this way right now. This is the existing... Sure. Um, use for Google Get Glass. So there's right. definitely uses for this. Yeah. So mm -hmm. the, the piece that's the brand, brand new piece here that didn't exist is the collaboration piece, right? Like that Paul just described. So you can have a person seeing things and people looking alongside him, but the actual like uh, physical act of collaboration, that's what's new. And that's what they're trying to play up by talking about the um, like the immersive presence and that kind of thing. But this isn't so substantially yeah. different from what they showed two years ago. At two years Mobile. ago, shh, right. Shh, shh. We're not, no, no, I no, know. no, no, we're not doing that. <laughs> right, so yep, two years ago. And, but Leo, remember this? We were doing, I was on yeah. the show with you live when they were doing this at yes. Mobile World Congress and yes. Paul was at Mobile World Congress. Yes. Yeah, and yeah. so everybody was focused that day on HoloLens 2. But we talked about Azure spatial anchors and Azure rendering. I remember. And to me, that was the big deal. And you were not right. the HoloLens. Uh, uh, yeah, Tim, Tim Sweeney <laughs> right. came out, remember? Yep. From Epic. Uh, Tim yeah. Sweeney, right? Yeah. Yep. yep. From Epic Games. So I think, yeah, I, I feel like they almost felt like nobody paid attention to those parts. And those are the parts that they were, were the, the important big parts. Deal. So they, right. they, well, by they, the way, I mean, they did this. this that's time. kind of. This is kind of on Microsoft because unfortunately with HoloLens and with Windows Mixed Reality, they have this habit of coming out with an announcement. It's always interesting. It always is interesting. And yeah. then it kind of, you don't really hear much for a year, or in this case, two years. It's like, yeah. you know, yeah. they've been working on things, you know, of course. and of course right. customers have been, been doing sitting. things. And yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just, yeah. I wish it was a little more regular, you know? Yeah. They, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, you know, I think it takes people like uh, you guys and especially Mary Jo to kind of explain really what the applications for this is and what it, what it means. Do you think Mary Jo Enterprise users look at this and say, oh, yeah, I get what this is going to be great? No, I think I think the thing. So when you're doing a keynote like this, you have to balance the want wanting to have a glitzy, fun thing like the aquarium versus showing people in a factory right. doing mundane tasks. I was right? trying to understand who <laughs> this part is for. Who is this for? I know. Is it I the know. press? This is, for, this is just showing a capability and it's fun. But by the yeah. way, the I, the other thing we got to remember is, you know, I, and I, do, I this is me for sure. I mean, I think of the Microsoft kind of commercial customer base and I think of people like me. You know, you're working at a traditional computer productivity tasks, you're an office worker, a knowledge worker, whatever you want to call it. But the truth is the commercial part of Microsoft's business encompasses a wide range of types of companies and customers that do different things. And it's not just, you know, guys in building cars or whatever. There's all kinds of use cases for this that have nothing to do with sitting in front of a computer typing into a Word document, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but if this becomes inexpensive enough, this could be a, a, a lighter, smaller version of this could be a peripheral that, you know, lots and lots of people get. And it would it would be useful for those kind of hybrid mm -hmm. meeting scenarios where it, it would be less fatiguing, uh, uh, presumably, than sitting here staring at a, a screen. So I now understand why Microsoft calls it mixed reality because mm -hmm. it is mixed. It will be AR for some people, people who can afford and have a HoloLens. Right. It'll be VR for people who are using an Oculus Quest. It will yep. be just, you know, 2D projections. That's 2D for people. AR, basically, yeah. like you see on an yeah. iPad. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so it is mixed reality. It's not necessarily one or the other. What is the experience you think in VR? Do you think? I mean, they said you could wear an Oculus Quest too to do this. Yeah, they did right. say that. What would I see, Alex? Lot. Uh, I don't you think it would probably provide like a 3D effect that you can't get on yeah. a 2D screen. Maybe, it would yeah. just kind of make a give it a depth. Yeah. I would imagine. Yeah. yeah, we're not seeing that. Does the HoloLens give yeah. it a more 3D depth or no? Well, it the does, HoloLens, you're right? seeing the real world. And so the, the way the yeah. holograms work overlaid on that real world is they realistically mm -hmm. interact with the environment. They get smaller as they go right. further away. They disappear behind things. Right. So, so it would be more like you're in 
the it's I don't I don't want to call it 3D. I mean, life is 3D, right. but it's right. it, it blends with the realistic. You know, it it fools your brain basically. Yeah, I would have yeah. liked to have seen this in Hololens and in uh, Oculus just to get a sense of. Yeah. What like these people like. in the audience here, I assume they were wearing mixed reality headsets, right? And that's the point right. of this. They're alt space VR, right? That's but the they're also yeah, so real world because we saw, and this, I think they made a big mistake. It would have been great to show the real world. Yeah, as exactly. You begin, show them. So we understand yeah. what the real world looks like. Because some of them could have been VR. Oculus, maybe. Some would be Windows yeah. Mixed Reality. Oh, some of them would have had a giant cattail in front of them. <laughs> just, what the heck was that? There must be like a mixed Very reality. Very realistic, Mary Jo. <laughs> there. there was a great depth to that. Yeah, there was. Oh, was, there goes Alex, right? transported yeah. out. That's that's how he's going to pass right yeah. there. He's just yeah. going to disappear. Yeah. 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 And then. So I put, I put a link in the show notes to a video that Microsoft put out in 2016 that you guys might remember. It showed... Um, a woman and an avatar and a hologram all interacting to build a retail experience. This came out in 2016, and I'm, I looked at it the other day, and I'm like, and this is what they just delivered with Microsoft wow. Mesh. <laughs> I actually remember this very well, and this I was what excited me more than yeah, anything the, about HoloLens. The stairs go up the side of the wall there. Yep, and... that's it. Yep. And so, so that's 2016. Are we right? there yet? This is the closest we've gotten to being there. Does yep. Hollands is not tethered? No. Okay. Right. So you, this is the you could have this experience today. Right. Okay. Yes. Yeah, she's uh, yeah, and it's AR, so she can see the real space she's in. She's not going right. to walk into a wall like she would right. with VR. The only difference mm -hmm. is the field of view of the augmented reality objects is not, uh, you know, that's right. that. it's, it's not right. that. That's it's right. Small. It's gotten a lot better, but it's still yes. Yeah. It's still what a, percentage a of the pain. screen is is the AR now? It's not a mail slot anymore. It's no, bigger. it's, oh boy, what percentage? I know. Hmm. It's hard so to see, say. So see, here's a guy using a VR so headset. Yeah that, was right? the, yeah, that was the Vive. And so he's right. in a and virtual so reality he's world. He's going to be able to react, interact with her wearing a HoloLens, even though he's not wearing a HoloLens. I can see right? why she would want to keep him at a distance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she would. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep him in what his is office. You? Yeah. So this, this, when they did this f uh, five years ago, this was pure speculation. This was, this was. was a vision. This was a, a vision. future vision. Uh, yeah. And it still somewhat is, but it's closer. It is. See. So you've got an avatar there so and a whole, avatar, and that's somebody the VR teleporting guy. in. Right. Yep. <laughs> right. That's the VR yep. guy. So that's the guy, yeah. that gold thing is the equivalent to those people in the audience. And this is what it he's is. seeing. He's seeing yep. them as, as. No, he can't. He won't be able to walk around, right? Because he's. Oh, okay. Right. Because he's, he's kind of stuck there. VR. He can look around. Okay. He's he can, interacting. Yes, he can turn around. He can certainly turn in space, but yeah. he shouldn't be able to walk around. Yeah. Right. Because he would walk right into his desk. He's right, right. in front yeah. of him. Right. Right. Now they got they eliminated these. I kind of sad that they did these uh, uh, faceted. Uh, wait a minute, that's isn't that Iron Man? <laughs> okay, sorry, <laughs> got carried away. Um, mm -hmm. They now you look a little more cartoony and you don't have arms and legs. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah. So there's their difference between the, the way they envisioned it and what they were right. actually able to do. And this is yeah. what four almost five years ago. Yeah. Five years ago. Yeah. And they are mm -hmm. able to. This is pretty close to what they can do now, right? It is. Okay. It's pretty um, close. Not I don't know, totally this there. Thing, yeah, I, uh, this thing they're showing right there yeah. is kind of hard to say. Um, I know. But I mean, see how they have the table and you can interact and annotate. That exists. Right. That capability right. is there. So. so in this in this video, those two people that are people are, are physically are there. in that room. Yeah. 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 And that other guy is not. And he, if they don't really, you don't really think about it too much, but he won't be able to walk around. Right. And here comes the right. lady from the cartel. <laughs> yep. Yeah. What happened to all our the stuff we had stored in here? <laughs> We're doing a surface demo. <laughs> um, but yeah, as soon as I saw the mesh announcement, I'm like, oh, this is the thing they tried to talk about in 2016. Right. right. That's funny. Right. I forgot about that video. Yeah. 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 Well. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. It's really. It's actually. It's in. It's really interesting. They're getting there. I feel like they're they, there. they didn't do it justice in a way. Yesterday. I agree. Um, agree. But maybe you they know, want like, to make it like glitzy. we were saying, they did. Keynotes are tough, right? Yeah. Like some people want you to go in there and talk about like auto managing VMs, and other people are like, no, I want to see something fun and cool <laughs> and crazy, right? Yeah, <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. And and you can't make everybody their, happy. Uh, uh, you know, not uh, not to criticize them, but I mean, remember, this is the second Ignite, right? So the first time right. ever, 
they're doing these two events kind of back to back. And so you could kind of think of this as the, the second half. Mm -hmm. You know, in the old days, they used to have like a, a second keynote on the second day. And, you know, yeah. in sort of this, and, you know, and it goes off in a, in a different direction. And I, I you know, I, I, I wonder the underwater thing. That might have been a mistake. That was the best choice, yeah. yeah. But yeah. just because it's confusing, like, it's like, so I'm sorry, is this what we're going to have meetings here now? What, right. <laughs> it would have been better had it been a more industrial environment, I think, maybe. Something, yeah, yeah. I wonder and, if there and is Incidentally, some... that's what this web page, the Microsoft yeah. web page does. This is all industrial. It does. Yeah. And yeah. they showed right. some of this, the air traffic control mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah. scenario, although I don't want my air traffic controllers to be wearing those, but okay. <laughs> Right, or, or to be holding those uh, controllers. Yeah, you know? yeah. This is the level of precision we're getting here. Yeah, but I think okay for, like, great for architecture. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. see, he's using what looks like, by the way, an Apple device. I, I, is there a Microsoft device that looks anything like that tablet he was holding? It's either a No, Sam but they said you can use it on third-party right. tablets it's, and phones. See, well, that looks like I a, mean, that could just be a Surface Pro or whatever. It could be. I can't, it could really, be. I can't really see it. You can't me. tell, yeah. Yeah. It's a generic, generic device. Yeah. 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 And yeah. yes, they're very big on pointing out that this is multi-platform. So, um, Oh, that's, but that's huge. I mean, that's, yeah. it I, is. I, you that's don't have to have the $3,000. Yeah. Yeah. Nope. Right. I also, you know, I enjoyed what, um, Satya Nadella said about, uh, sovereignty and privacy and trust. I thought that, as it's unfortunate because his stuff is so it's not even 30,000 foot 120,000 foot <laughs> <laughs> that it's hard to it's not so concrete but uh, yeah, sure. do you feel like this was my interpretation you know uninformed interpretation this was him saying we understand especially in a multinational world where you know China and Russia are going to do something that that's the sovereignty of the user the privacy of the user and trust in Microsoft are going to be the tent poles for what we go do going forward. Does that seem like that's what he was saying, or did I miss, miss the point entirely? No, you were correct. Okay. Um, he was talking about the five attributes of what they call the Microsoft Cloud, and so the idea of of sovereignty, you know, being able to keep your data in your own country and and observe all the rules around GDPR and privacy. That's one of the key poles they have for sure. And make um, so yeah. privacy it depends yeah. on what your what your government yeah. allows, I guess. Exactly. Yeah. And they announced a, a data center in China and as Azure region in China. So you know this all is part of the whole idea. You have to do that though. There's no wherever choice. you wh right wherever you have to be, you're there, and we're still going to try to guarantee that you have trust by design and the privacy and all all of those things you expect from Microsoft. Yeah. 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 Had they used uh, terms like sovereign before? Is this or, uh, this seem yeah that seemed new Very, to me? Uh, it's pretty new, but um, I'd say in the past few months it's starting to show up more in their literature. Um, the whole a, idea of sovereign computing. Very interesting word choice. It is. And it's a good, it's actually a good word choice because it expands on their privacy message. Yeah, um, and acknowledges and that you a, have to yeah. follow the laws of the country you're working in. Right. Yep. 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 So sovereignty. Yeah, I think a, he only a, said tech intensity once, maybe, which was really excellent. I, yeah, I didn't hear that. learning. No drink when no he learning. Uh, didn't hear learning. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he was pretty good. I was trying to decipher. I don't know if anybody has yet deciphered the stuff on the shelves. He got rid of the devs <laughs> in uh, Base sixty four, yeah. and but it looked like there was something in Sanskrit or something there instead. Um, mm -hmm. Some of the things had moved. I don't know. That's just me. I. It's the game yeah. I play. People want to know, yeah. like, are Easter eggs sure. hidden there? I feel like there probably were, yeah. 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 Um, yeah, and I thought Azure, now what do you call them now, the the geographic lo uh, location things? Is Azure? Regions. No, 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 where no, the no, anchors. No, the uh, anchor points. Anchor, oh, no, Azure no. Spatial Anchors. Spatial Anchors. <laughs> Uh, I've always thought that's interesting because that takes this out into yeah. the real world. That's what, I, you know, unfortunately, that's yeah. what Minecraft VR was based on, and, and they killed that. Mm -hmm. But I still don't understand why they got rid of that. I, I know. Just, I mean, unless they fu they figured something out where this can never work properly, but it just seemed like yeah. something that would it was take a demo off. of anchors, of, of Azure yeah. anchors. Yeah. yeah, the idea of having a persistent hologram that somebody can go find, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Anchored in your real world. I thought that was very interesting. 
So mesh is not really anything new. It's a. It's just all of the existing things. I say a little bit mesh new. Mesh is brand but, new. But they never said the word mesh before. <laughs> no. no, so, you know, we well, should last time that he said that reunion, too. and that was the, I went, what? <laughs> you know. No, remember, they have had something called mesh before. When Ray Ozzy was still at Microsoft, oh my God. they had something yeah, of course. called Live the Mesh. Former Windows, oh, I remember that. Windows Live yeah. uh, yep. folder share. Yeah. Great. That's... So they probably still own the Mesh trademark, and they're like, hey, guys, we haven't used sure. this in a while. Let's let's bring Mesh back and <laughs> use not, it for this. Not right? Ozzy's Mesh. <laughs> yeah. Um, not the same on Mesh. And I like your yeah. analogy, Paul. Maybe you can expand on this. Mesh mm -hmm. is to HoloLens as Viva is to Microsoft 365. <laughs> Could you explain? Yeah, meaning that it is a collection of things that uh, many of which already existed and maybe had different names, but have evolved. A few new pieces. But the, the, the key thing is it's that licensable moment. I know it's kind of a sarcastic way to say it, but... Um, a licensable you know, moment. I love that. Well, I mean, it's, <laughs> you know, look, we're not, do we're not doing this for charity. I mean, you know, yeah. um, and you had said something, which, by the way, was exactly the reaction I had as it was happening, which was, this would have been nice a year ago, but you can't predict, you know, a pandemic, right? So um, did this happen because of the pandemic? I, I'm not really 100% sure, but... Uh, it is too bad we didn't have this stuff during the pandemic, but the reality is we're going to go into that hybrid world, and there and will be it'll be a hangover from, from the it, pandemic. You know? I think a lot of a lot of companies are going to be doing work from home from now on. Well, next next Same. year we'll uh, you know in twenty twenty two you know maybe hopefully we'll go to some ignite somewhere, and uh, maybe. maybe Mary uh, Joe and I and others <laughs> show up, and but many many others won't. Right, and some yeah. of those people it's a hybrid will be world. Able to the world is going to be hybrid. I think that's very fair. Right, but there'll be some percentage of those people who will have a an experience that's a little bit between the two of just not being there and just being there by virtue of the fact that maybe they have a, a virtual reality headset right. of some kind. And they right. can have that, you know, a little more immersive, less strainy kind of thing, maybe. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm... I, I, it helps. It helps to hear you guys talk about it. And, and <laughs> well, it I hope it. it helps to hear so, how confused we are. We well were all because. kind of by the end of that keynote yeah. when they were dancing around the fire. Oh. I'm like, okay, what are we seeing here? <laughs> but we, we should also point out. Here's the thing, uh, and this is available publicly now. But they, as they've done now for several events in a row, they provide uh, the media with uh, a book of news and some other yeah. documents. They had some other blog posts. Mm -hmm. um, this mesh thing was not in any of that. What? Now, it had leaked a little bit. Well, they like to have a surprise, right? And so obviously they wanted this underwater world, you know, to be surprising and fun for most people. And so they didn't tell uh, all of us about it. And um, that made it doubly confusing, you know, because for people yeah. like me who had, you know, you, you kind of, you're watching it. This is the first, you know, you don't have any background, no explanation, nothing. And you're looking at it like, Okay, um, <laughs> you know, you have to kind of yeah. try to pick it out, like what's new, what's not new, what, you know, what's going on here. Yeah. We got all this news, all this news, crazy amount of news, <laughs> none of which was mentioned in the keynote, you know, yeah. uh, yeah. almost none of which. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, it's confusing on that level as well. Well, kind yeah, of a fog uh, of war. and we're going to get to that news, like that all the team's announcements and so forth. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, yeah. And so those were pushed off into the other parts of Ignite, I guess. Basically. Well, obviously, there are sessions still ongoing, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, and being repeated, I'm sure as well, and available for replay. And then there are all these blog posts that they're pointing out. You know, one thing that Mary Jo pointed out to me privately right before we started the show, actually, right before we did the Ignite thing earlier, was, you know, there there wasn't a lot of Windows news in the book of news, right? Which is kind of typical, yeah. frankly. I mean, we're, I'm getting a little bit used to it, but I always look. You know, you never know, and. Um, and then she said, hey, there's these, if you go to the, what is it, the Windows for IT Pro blog, there's uh, eight blog posts about new Windows 10 features for IT Pros. They never even mentioned uh, anywhere. <laughs> it's not in the book of news. It wasn't in the keynote. You know, so there's, uh, you really have to kind of pay attention. There's a lot of, a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. Well, this is, you know, thank you. Uh, and by the way, how did it go this morning? You guys uh, did an event. Good. For Microsoft, yeah. Yeah, I thought it was nice. It was yeah. nice. I miss those guys so much. You know, like know. Donna and Seth yeah. and uh, 
Oh, you had Donna Sakara. Jeff Sanquist was there. Oh, fun. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, I want to see these guys, you know, in person. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it's been a while. Now, it's been like a year and a half. That's a while, Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I don't, and that's, by the way, an important point. This mesh stuff may be great. But I think after pandemic, we're all going to kind of want. Oh my god! I just want yeah. to. I be can't in even believe. Yeah. So I want to get on a plane. That's how bad it's been. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, Panay had a uh, uh, a session uh, today, yeah. right? The the heartbeat uh, of or yesterday, yeah. the heartbeat of modern work, a fireside chat with Panos Panay and Roan Sones. Anything yeah. so, uh, come out of that? Yeah, one sentence. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. This thing was 14 minutes long. What? And it was yeah. like 13 minutes of fluff. <laughs> and then so tiny. They, went, they just wanted they wanted to throw Windows fans a bone and say like Panos is yeah. here guys, it's just not the right event for him so to be doing. So I have this a theory thing. about why they did this because <laughs> I just I, as I just said, um Windows is often not part of the news directly, right? Yeah. Obviously it's part of Microsoft right. 365 and there are clients that run on Windows 10 blah blah blah, but it, it, mm -hmm. Windows 10 is a kind of a news-making entity at Ignite, or even at Build, but Ignite especially. It's not been a thing for a long time. And so, yeah. you know, people like me uh, and people like us who write about Windows or write about Microsoft, you know, we'll complain about this or comment on it. And so, you know, they had this conversation like, look, <laughs> Panos, you got to do, do a session. He's like, I'm not doing a session. I got to do a session. I'm not doing a session. All right, 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah, I'm not talking about the next version. You got to mention it. You just, just mention it. <laughs> And he's like, I don't want to do this. And like, you're doing it. And so he just went out there and he said in one sentence, he says, there is a next generation version of Windows. It's coming next. And I am so pumped. We're not talking about that today. Yeah. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> and it's like, dude, seriously. Like they, they, I, I mean, how could we upset these people even more? We will mention Windows. <laughs> um, so that's what they, yeah, that's what that was. Yeah. I mean, I, I, know. I don't it know was. why why it was so short, but. Because uh, they don't well, want do to sort of spoil it yet. Like they're trying to save the Windows news for Bill. So it was right? a tease. And, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it was a tease. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. So when you hear the next generation of Windows, obviously people are thinking, you know, people's minds start to go a little bit. Because that phrase has come up recently. That phrase, I think, yeah. kind of leaked, didn't it? Somewhere. This is not the first time we've heard this referred to this way. No, we've heard it and, called uh, the new Windows, right? Like the I new think Windows, Walking yeah. Cat put something on Not like that, that piece of junk Windows you guys are using today. It's <laughs> the new Windows. It's going to be great. Um <laughs> You know, Windows 10X is coming this year. We know that. And uh, Windows 10 version 21H2 is coming, and we know that. And that yeah. 21H2 will have a new UI or UX or whatever, uh, codenamed Sun Valley. And so I guess between those two or three things, yeah, there's, you know, I, I, that's the next generation of Windows. But, yeah. you know, now we, we have to start speculating. Well, are they going to... I mean, everywhere else, he, he specif specifically said Windows 10. Windows 10, Windows 10, Windows 10. And then this one sentence is the next generation of Windows. It was the only time he didn't say Windows 10. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, are we going to yeah. change the name? Uh, I don't think we're going to suddenly it. have Windows yeah. 11, right? Or, I mean, at I, most, I maybe they'll start calling it Windows and stop calling that's it Windows what, Yeah, that's, what, that's where I was maybe. heading. Uh, maybe. Yep. Right? Which is what I argued when they did Windows 10. If you're going to skip a yeah. version number, I mean, why? And, and yeah. say that this is the final version or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Just call it Windows. It's weird yeah. not to call it Windows, just plain Windows, right? <laughs> yeah. Yep. I think so. But. Yeah. Yeah, but just plain Windows. I don't know if you could trademark that. So. Well, it's Microsoft Windows. <laughs> right. Right. It's Windows. Right. It's Windows. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you do have a, a guide. Where is that guide, Paul? Is that on your site to the... Uh, yeah, it's not. I mean, guide is a strong term, I guess. But it's uh, basically what I did is I went through the session lists and I found anything related to Windows that I thought would be of interest to people who actually care about Windows. And it's not a long list, <laughs> but uh, this Panay 14-minute uh, session was one of the items. <laughs> the future mixed reality is in there. There's some edge stuff coming up, although I don't have a date or time on that one yet. Um, future veg. So uh, Ignite is an IT and developer conference, right? It is. Yeah. Right. I, mean, I could yeah. see why they really IT, but I could see why they'd want to talk a lot about Azure, but isn't Windows kind of the bread and butter? <laughs> I am it, gonna die on that. Yeah, hill. I know. Um, <laughs> I, and you know, I, I gotta say, I, I feel like 
like Paul and I were talking today, I'm like, there were there were some Windows announcements for IT pros that they made, but they weren't even in the book of news either. And I feel like mm. Microsoft's message is, guys, we know you still have to deal with Windows, but we want you to look at Azure, right? Like, we want yeah. you to look over here, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. yeah Interesting. It, um, when you say you book it. of news, is there an actual book? There yeah, is. Yeah, it's a, you know, a PDF virtual document. Book. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I saw it linked to somewhere, so it is available publicly. I put it in here. there. Yeah, yeah, I put it. I put okay. it in our notes. Yeah, it's here there. It is. Yeah. So anybody can uh, just search for the ignite. Yeah, search book for the of term. News. Ter oh, he's he found it. Um, do yeah. a do a search of the document for the word Windows. Oh, interesting. <laughs> Let's see. This is uh, we we can pretend to be Paul today. There you go. How many how many results does dot, it say? Dot net. Framework based Windows. No, but how many do you? Is there a thing there that says eleven results or whatever the uh, number is? No, I don't. My browser yeah, is not as not smart bad. as Edge. Uh, okay, so I believe the number is eleven. <laughs> but yeah. but as you can see, as you flip through it, none of them are actually directly Although, Windows. This is the one I'm yeah. interested in: Windows Virtual Desktop. Yeah. I feel like this is the future of Windows. Yeah. Well, the one you're really interested in is the what's it called? Cloud PC. Oh, okay. Uh, Same idea. Is, you run Windows, which is a virtual, you know, cloud. version, yeah, yeah, of Windows, yeah. It's no cloud. I'm sorry, cloud PC is not in there. <laughs> sorry, sorry, it's not. It's, it's not, not actually in there. No. Um, but that's the thing you're actually interested in, right? That that yes, uh, Windows is a service kind of a thing. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. yeah. So that's not Windows uh, Virtual Desktop. That's something else. Well, arguably it is. It's just a, an instance of it running in Azure and uh, also a licensable moment, by the way. Um, <laughs> that's, that's why it exists. Yeah. Um, I really love that phrase. It's really <laughs> so awesome. There were, there were a few things, though, that weren't Windows that I thought were still pretty interesting at Ignite. How why? dare you? Why? How dare you? Yeah. No, like there was one thing they had called Azure Percept. Um, which I thought was very interesting. So the idea of Azure Percept is it's this hardware and software kit that you can take this camera and you, it has a software module for it. And when you mount it in your factory or your home, even your home, it brings artificial intelligence, artificial intelligence processing and other Azure services to these IoT devices that are mounted in your with the camera, right? So the idea is, People don't know how to train models and understand all that lingo from AI. But what if you could take a, something that's prepackaged and certified and just say, hey, the model training is all handled for me and everything. And now I can get these capabilities like cognitive search and other AI kinds of things delivered right to my device at the edge. So I, they want to build this out like a whole ecosystem, almost like Windows itself. Like they're, they're like, what if we could get third parties to make these things and to have like a whole like marketplace of these kinds of Azure Percept devices? And I'm like, OK, that's that's interesting. I don't know if you can, but it's it's kind of a cool concept. Yeah. I mean, it's it almost like, like the a, Connect um, camera, right? <laughs> yeah. It, it looks like um, like a like a wireless network extender or something. It does. It does. Yeah. It's like a, it's like on I, I found out what this is now, an 80-20 frame, which is, I guess, some kind of a piece of hardware that lets you mount devices on walls. Who knew? Look at me. I Now I know about Windows doors and, and framing. I'm like <laughs> right. a carpenter now. <laughs> but yeah, I have some I, like, uh, oh, Ethernet okay. cable to lay if you want to <laughs> swing by this weekend and give me a hand. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I was kind of intrigued by that. I'm like, you know what? I, okay, they're they're trying to, I, I use this word when we were talking on the show at Ignite, democratize the use yeah. of AI at the edge. I think it's smart because right now it's yeah. too hard for most regular people, even business people, to figure out how to do this. And if you could give them a kit that's prepackaged with all the smarts already in there and just say, hey, put this on your wall. There you go. Now you get AI at the edge. Yeah, Boom. And this is what you had <laughs> said, but you're and you're right. Uh, this is Microsoft's greatest strength to me, uh, the democratization yeah. of technology, it right? Is. The, yep. Bringing Power BI down to Excel or whatever it was back yep. in the day. You know, they, they, yep. they've they always, you know, take it out of the white lab suited, you know, super scientists' hands and, and put it into the hands of the masses, you know? Yeah. 
So I thought that was cool. And then, like you mentioned before, all the teams announcements, there were so many, like 50 new teams yeah. announcements or something. But <laughs> mm. there there were some good yeah, ones team. in there. Yeah. Teams what? is the, um, yeah, I, look, I, the, the team stuff is hard because we would have gotten these teams announcements anyway, right? If Ignite ha didn't happen this week, there still would have yeah. been 15 new teams features this month, right? So, At and least. I don't mean to belittle it. it it's just, <laughs> no. it's moving so it's quickly. It is a platform, you know, yeah. it's crazy. And yeah. the thing I had said earlier, which I feel very strongly about, is that, you know, Teams is now the center of the Microsoft experience on the client. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's not Windows anymore. You know, it really isn't. It's Teams. Um, and uh, it's it, it, for as awful as 2020 was, the past year has been, for sure. You know, one of the silver linings that comes out of this is Teams has made a lot of the things that we do for work better. And as we go mm -hmm. back to work, or we go into these hybrid things. Uh, Teams is going to persist because the advantages of it are so obvious. Mm -hmm. uh, even when people are together in the same room, you're still going to want to record those meetings so people yeah. can search for them later or people who aren't there can go watch them later or people who speak other languages can take advantage of that auto uh, translation functionality uh, to, to actually, you know, to be part of it. It's just, it's incredible, mm -hmm. you know? Yep. And yep. keeping track of Teams is... Like keeping track to the source code of Windows, there's no one. There's no one person that can do this. I know it's crazy how big it's got. I know there's so many different things. Like the the one feature I was really um, intrigued about with Teams was this Teams Connect thing that they announced. And the reason I'm intrigued about it is it it addresses a problem I talk about all the time, which is if I'm a guest in multiple instances of Teams, I have to keep signing in and out as guests in the different. Teams yeah. client, right? And this, I believe, will get me around that, that it will just let me have um, everything <laughs> kind of stay as it is and I can switch between clients um, yeah. more seamlessly. And as Panos would say, not interrupt my flow. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, this seems like a million years ago, but we'll say it was probably a couple of years ago. Yeah. The, one of the big issues with Teams was its inability to kind of federate, if you will, out right. to Skype yep. users in particular, but just people who were, were not part of your team's organization. It was a huge problem. Right. Um, obviously, that's been solved, whatever. But now there, a lot of these new features, including I think that one you just mentioned, is, is based around this notion of not everyone's in your organization. We yep. still need some way to collaborate and share information. And, you know, obviously you want it to be policy-based, so you're doing all the right things where you're not giving up. Uh, corporate secrets or whatever, but you know, Teams has evolved incredibly in that dimension uh, over the past year or two. I guess we'll say. Uh, yeah. And it, you know, if, when you go through the new features that they um, announced this this week, a bunch of them have this element to it. You know, that it's mm -hmm. it's for people inside and outside of your organization. Yeah. Yeah. And then if you're a presenter, if you're somebody who does a lot of presentations, there's tons of new yeah. PowerPoint presentation features in Teams and ways that it'll be easier for you as you're presenting inside Teams to see all your information in the right place. And I think they call it presenter view so that it won't be so yeah, awkward for you, right. you know, going back and forth. That's cool. And um, also yeah. webinars, uh, very similar. Right. The webinar uh, stuff. Yep. It's yep. Teams is unbelievable. It's just yeah, I wish I loved it because this is the type of thing you can. You, <laughs> I no, think you, you do love it. You love it way more I than know, I love. I, but it. I know exactly what Paul's saying. <laughs> like you look over there, and the features are great, and it really seems That's like crazy. It, yeah, yeah. This yeah. is like uh, job security. I could I, I could ride this thing out for the rest of my life. It'd be great. <laughs> They're, you know, they're clearly all don't. in on it. I mean, this is becoming a pl yeah a platform, yeah. not just an app, but a platform. oh my god, it's incredible! All yeah. a lot of these announcements are about the like the presenter mode, the uh, PowerPoint presenter mode thing that Mary Jo mentioned. It's one of many apps that run inside of Teams. Yeah. You know, it's crazy. Why don't you like it, Paul? I don't. It's like saying, "Why don't I like ice cream?" I, I don't know. <laughs> you know, yeah, I mean, I, I no. I have the same reaction, though. You know, I I want to I want to like Teams. I want to use it. I no, think I, part I, I, of I the problem like is it's the UI needs not to be fixed. Yes, it's too complex for the UI. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's my biggest problem. Well, by the way, that yeah. was one of the things that's coming out. They're they're working on a lighter version of this thing. I I think that's good. One of the that's issues good. with. Uh, 
the way Teams has, has exploded is they, they have whatever architecture they have for the apps. It's a little big and heavy. Mm -hmm. um, Electron probably being the yep. primary reason. It is. And um, <laughs> I think it's Electron, right? It doesn't matter, but yep, they're, 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 tr they're working on that. You know, they, they know that this thing needs to be a lightweight shell and that people need to be able to pick and choose the modules they want. And, um, you know, that's all there. I, I, I don't dislike teams. I don't, I don't, I just, I don't want that to be misunderstood. I think teams is unbelievable. I just don't have a, an enthusiast's kind of, uh, obsession about it. Like I do with windows. Yep. Like there's nothing going on with Windows, and this is all I think about. But everything's going on with Teams, and I, I just can't. I, I can't Field I guide to Teams. It's calling your name. I just, I, <laughs> it would be like a full time job. Yeah. Yes, it would. New features every time I wake up. It would a be a total full time job. This is yeah. a little bit of a Microsoft problem, which is <laughs> they tend to take, you know, the old Unix uh, model for an app was do one thing well. And then yep. interoperate with other yeah. things. Oh yeah, yeah. This is the opposite. This of that. is the complete opposite. It they is. take it and it turns in every yep. app yep. turns into a bucket for myriad features. Mm -hmm. yep. it's Teams the is SharePoint. This is Outlook, guys. The Outlook Teams model. is SharePoint. Yeah, SharePoint. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> By the way, you know what? I have the best. This is this is an awesome description of Teams. It just occurred to me the other day. Teams is the last gift that Bill Gates gave to Microsoft. <laughs> what? Really? Is now, that hold old? on a second. What does that mean? Yeah. Bill Gates uh, obviously, uh, you know, left the CEO role at one point. He became the chief uh, scientist or whatever. Mm -hmm. Eventually, he sort of semi-retired. He's an advisor, blah blah blah. He's not long. He's not really part of the day-to-day -day operation of Microsoft. But mm -hmm. Satya Nadella and others still go to him sometimes for advice. And one of the last things they asked him—not that they not still ask him things—but that turned into a big decision was: Do we buy Slack or do we make our own thing? And he said, you don't buy Slack. We already have all this stuff. Let's just build it ourselves. We're Microsoft. And they decided to build Teams themselves. If they had gone with Slack, I don't know that Teams as we know it today would be anything like Teams is today. So I, I think that this was Bill Gates' last giant influential uh, assistance to Microsoft, or however you want to say it, I think. Well, we'd also have had gotten Stuart Butterfield. So, you know, one for Bill. <laughs> Um, yeah, we can thank him for that too. Exactly. Yeah. So I think, I think there were some good things like that, like the team's announcements, Azure Percept. Um, they also re-announced the, um, <laughs> preview of Windows Server No, no, it's new. It's new. It's no, brand not new. new. 2022 not new. is not even this year. It's next year, Mary Jane. It's new. No, guys. So... <laughs> So here's You're the confusing thing. You're close to why thing. that's right. I know. So in the past, if Microsoft shipped a product, a big product like Windows Server, <laughs> after June, they usually right. added the name, uh, sorry, added the date for the it's following like, it's year. It's like a new so, car. It's the, it's the new model. Exactly. Exactly. Model year. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But here's the thing. Insiders have been testing this version of Windows Server since last year, at least. Like every time there's a new... <laughs> a new test build like there was today, it's this. It's this thing that's called Windows Server 2022, right? So they, they announced on their blog, here's the preview of Windows Server 2022. We're announcing it officially. And I'm like, well, yeah, testers have had this for a year, but okay, you're <laughs> announcing it now. Um, but they did itemize a feature list at least. So now you mm -hmm. can see the feature list that's official um, for this. And you know what? For being an on-premises product, there are quite a few new features in this coming release. First off, it's LTSC, long-term servicing channel, which means you get 10 years of support for it. Five years extended, five years mainstream or mainstream and extended. Um, what else do you get? Azure Arc is going to be able to govern these servers better than they can, I guess, the existing versions of Windows Server. Um, Multi-layer protection against threats with secured core server, um, better virtual machine management, improved container architecture. So all up, like a lot of really good um, right, things that I think IT pros will care about. But what? You're going to disparage it's, it's this? New. It's new. It's new. <laughs> it's all new. Because this new. thing, uh, Windows <laughs> Server 2021, as it was originally called, was supposed to be out, what, by the end of last year? 
Was there mm-hmm. going to be one? I don't remember that. Well, no, was, I remember uh, them. They've been testing this thing since last year. And at some point they did call it server 2022. Um, oh, did they? Okay. And they also said um, last August it would be out at the end of calendar 2021. They said that. Yeah. That's, and now they're oh, not even saying I'm sorry. Right. That's what I was, I'm sorry. That's what I was thinking yeah. of was 2021. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. But you know what? Now when you ask them, is it going to be out towards the end, like latter half of this year, they just say it's going to be out this year. Which okay. makes me wonder if it's going to be out sooner rather than later. I don't know. Maybe. Guys, this shouldn't be a secret. It's Windows Server. <laughs> I know. This is the LTSC, though, right? So this is the one is. you care about. Yeah, you yep. care about this if you're an IT pro. Yeah. Well, they don't really, this is not a product. They don't ship a new Windows Server 2020 something every year. I mean, this is yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, the first I one since what, 2019 yeah. was probably the last 2019 one. 2019 was the last one. And how big, is the, how big is the box that it comes in? I'm just curious. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you go down to Fry's, Leo, uh, you'll find it in the... Fry's has it on sale right yeah. now. <laughs> I've actually, I, I, one of the things I did see in Fry's back in you know, in the Bay Area somewhere was a uh, probably like the Aztec Temple one where it San Jose. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, Sunnyvale. Yeah. Um, they had they had Windows Server in a box. Sure. And it was like <laughs> yeah. 1700 bucks. you know, oh, X can you imagine? Licenses. Yeah. And I was like, well, this is on a shelf. Yeah. I can buy gummy bears over here. Yeah. I can buy like Pretzels, a little remote-controlled helicopter chips. over here. Yeah. And I can buy Windows Server. That's why we <laughs> love fries. Yeah, it was crazy. I used to do their ads in uh, San Francisco. Your best oh, computer man, buys are always at fries, guaranteed. Nice. I, I, love I, fries. I, I dream that sometimes. Yeah, it's kind of sad. Nice. But it's like That's Radio Shack. It's like Circuit City. Yep. It's just, I mean, brick and mortar retail, yeah. especially for computer and technology stuff. Yep. Yeah. I mean, yep. Just, oh, I, I, I feel guilty every time I walk in a bookstore or a, a Best Buy. It's like these are. I should love being here, and I. There's nothing for me here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I just yeah. feel so weird about it. Uh, 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 you. I'm, I feel so guilty because I'll go into our, we have a wonderful, still have a wonderful independent bookstore, Copperfields. Yeah. And nice. I'll go in there and if they don't have the book I want, they say, well, we can order that for you. You'll be here in a couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. And I just, yeah, right. you know, uh, yeah, tell the Pony Express I'm just going to go to Amazon like the rest of the planet and get it tomorrow. You know? I, I feel so bad. Spoiled. How many people walk <laughs> yeah. into those stores and just look it up on their phone and order it there and then go grab a coffee yeah. and leave, you know? It just yeah. makes me so sad because I, I want them to survive. I feel terrible about this. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> there is, I found there's a uh, audio book store, Libro, wow. L-I-B-R-O dot F-M, that mm-hmm. shares its revenue with your local bookstore. You say who your local oh, bookstore cool. is so that you, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how much they share, but it helps with the guilt. Yeah. It yeah, helps yeah. with the guilt. Um, it's like a carbon offset. <laughs> Yeah, it's exactly. <laughs> I'm planting a tree yeah. in Israel. Yeah. And You're like, I don't I know what the, I'm somewhere. doing, but I feel yeah. good about it. I feel better about it. <laughs> I think that's going to yeah. be a big yeah. market going forward. You know, yeah. guilt guilt yeah. uh, credits. Guilt, guilt as credits. a service. Guilt as a service. <laughs> <laughs> right. What is Endorsed power? My mother's everywhere. <laughs> guilt as a service, <laughs> Ga- which gives you gas. Uh, yes. Power Automate Desktop App. What's that? Did we talk about that? So yet? the power platform is this low code, no code environment, or actually a set of environments really that Microsoft provides, right? Oh, so okay. it's growing and growing. And yeah. this is a way to automate um, Windows desktop application or any applications really, right? Uh, things that happen on the desktop. So instead of like a code-based automation of background services, this is like workflow automation. Um, so I need to, this is something I'm going to look at soon. I just, I had not heard of this until we got the book of news and I was like, Oh, look at this little thing. So this looks interesting. Robotic process automation. Yeah. RPA. If you've done any, like we've all, what is, it's like an if then, then that kind of thing, but for processes that occur on the desktop. So I'm going to, oh, there goes Sirachi's tail. I'm gonna, He's like, that's enough of the book Enough of, of the gas. <laughs> right, right um, the gas. So you're a coder, Paul. And mm, I'm just yeah, curious right. what you as a coder think of low code, no code. Like, um, would yeah. you ever use it? Well, I looked at Power Apps and was it, I guess it was Power Automate last year. And yeah, I mean, honestly, these things are pretty powerful. The one thing I found was that after I had written those... Um, notepad apps in three different frameworks. I was looking for like a different kind of thing. And I 
worked uh, on like a cocktail app, remember, for, with my wife's recipes and stuff. Right. And I tried it in different web technology, Flutter. Um, I, I mocked some stuff up to, in WinForms, or actually, I'm sorry, in WPF or whatever. Um, and then I, I said, well, let me try this with Power Apps. And it was like, boop, 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 done. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, this thing's awesome. I couldn't believe how easy it was. Oh, like, that's it was really interesting. Excellent. So I... I I will say over the years I've watched as Microsoft has done different things. I'll pull out two of them that I can just remember off the top of my head, like PowerShell, everyone's heard of. I remember the big disconnect with PowerShell when it first came out because this is a, a powerful .NET based object oriented scripting language. It's incredible. How would the average administrator learn this? It's like it, it's it, the the use of it is obvious, but. I think the expectation was that average admins and IT pros would use this to automate things, you know, instead of uh, uh, enrolling one user, you right. can enroll a thousand or whatever right. it is. And I just feel, I still feel like it's a little too complex uh, for a lot of those people. And that what you really need is some kind of a team of people. And you could go to a developer and say, hey, look, I need this kind of thing. And they could make that solution for you or whatever. Uh, the other one was something called Visual Studio Lighthouse, which is a little closer to this stuff. And uh, that kind of came and went. But again, it was the citizen developer thing. The idea was anyone can be a developer. And I was like, eh, you know, I, <laughs> I'm not really sure that's true. Um, I feel like what's happened uh, with the Power Platform is they've reached a level of, I'm going to call it accessibility, um, where it is now more accessible to more people than ever before for this kind of thing. And Microsoft, by the way, is not the only one working on this. You know, Google has its own kind of low-code, no-code stuff that they're doing as well, and I'm sure others do too. But um, I I think we're at the point now where people are comfortable enough with technology, for one thing, and then the, this type of technology in particular has gotten easy enough that, you know, average users, for lack of a better term, um, could be successful with it. You know, I, th I always think of my wife or my mother or any just normal person, like, would they grok this? Um, no, no, but <laughs> no, no, but they're, but, but they're also, you know, doing very particular things with their lives. I mean, you know, someone who's in a, uh, an IT, an IT guy might yeah, 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 yeah. I think, and that's really the audience here. It's not my right. wife or my mother, no. right? It's, right. it's somebody who's already who has, in a technical profession, but yeah. isn't a coder yet. Yeah, yeah, but, but, needs, but I, is, I think this is big. I think it's yeah. big. No, they're they're targeting people who know Excel, right? Yeah. And that that's a big yeah, audience. That's a for form of coding. Yeah. Sure. It is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. yeah. So GK in the uh, chat room wants to know if you see power automate desktop encroaching on software testing. I'm not sure testing. Why oh, to automate tasks. That's yeah. interesting. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I don't oh. see why not, actually. Yeah, yeah mm. sure. I don't know enough about this particular product yet. I have, I have not used it. So, so you could create a I'm fuzzer. I see what this looks like. Something yeah, that bangs it's... on the keyboard like a monkey. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. I'm going to write a, like a Paul Therott bot that will just structure yeah. a document. Yeah, and... yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, this this RPA technology that they were talking about, it, it's from a company they bought called Softomotive. Um, and this is the technology. Oh, so they acquired it. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> there is there is somebody, uh, <laughs> I, I've seen his, uh, his slow progress, who's doing the last year's advent of code, which is a coding competition, pretty mm -hmm. tough, in Power yeah. BI. And I thought, oh, wow. that's, that's just masochistic. <laughs> that's just... It that's, is. Well, but... <laughs> Uh, but yeah, you can do I mean, it. I always think that's what's stuff. interesting. Yeah. So I, 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 you know, if it's a full, if it's a, it's a Turing complete language, yeah. you should yeah. be able to do uh, every one of those problems. And it might not be the easiest, but if you're, you know, fluent in a language, uh, and I presume that uh, Power Apps is is Turing complete, that it can do anything any other. I don't know actually. Well, it's also it's it's kind say. of growing as a platform, right? So the the Power FX stuff I see is sort of a scripting language style kind of glue type of thing. I mean, they, they, they're really kind of expanding it out. Um, and I, I don't, I, you know, I'm, I'm curious about uh, the power automate desktop app is interesting specifically because it's windows obviously, but it's also automating tasks that happen in applications. And I'm really curious right. about this because applications have all kinds of different interfaces. To me, you know, that's that what VB script was. And then VBA mm -hmm. And it That's was right. pretty yeah. accessible. I mean, given you had a program, but I mean, it was pretty accessible. So and I think the big difference between Power Automate and that stuff is that 
for VB script or VBA to work, the app had to support the, that thing, right? right? And typically VBA for have an interface to it, yeah. In this case, um, people are writing connectors for the power platform, so uh, you, you're get, you're kind of getting over the incompatibilities. Like, I I want to access data that's in a I'm going to make something up like OneDrive or something, and I want it to go out and do something with Microsoft Word. Those two things might actually those two things probably do natively connect, but I mean, it doesn't matter. The point is, you kind of just pull from these different places, and you don't have to worry about the incompatibility or how it works because they're just black boxes, you know. And uh, that's what especially non-coders need, uh, for sure. So I think, like I said, I think it's it, it's more accessible. And I think they've finally gotten to the point where this is uh, something that has legs, you know? Mm. Um, unlike, you know, PowerShell, which we could all agree was a huge failure. I don't mean, no, I mean, obviously PowerShell <laughs> is amazing. No, but PowerShell is a very, uh, it's a very technical product. You know? It is. I feel like um, this is, the goal of this is to not be is a to, technical Yeah, right. is, exactly. <laughs> and, I, and I'm not saying this was like something that because of PowerShell, I mean, PowerShell obviously yeah. has its place. It's amazing. Um, yeah. But this reaches a different audience. And I think it's, yes. like, yeah, I keep using the same word. I think it's just more accessible. Mm -hmm. um, cool. Yeah, that was a good conversation. I really enjoyed that. Oh, we should have done the keynote. <laughs> 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 Moving uh, right along, Windows 10 20H2 <laughs> is yeah. now on 20% of all Windows PCs, 10 PCs. Yeah, that's slowly creeping up. That, yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. 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 I, I think the big thing here is it, it's it's been kind of consistent last what was it? Uh, it was la the month before it was 16.8%. Month before that, it was 13.6%. You know, but we're getting into the situation now where um, we have three kind of main, the last three versions of Windows are all both basically the, almost the entire user base, right? Not really, but almost. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, when you look at something like 1909 and 1903, those are basically the same thing. 2004 and 20H2 20 are basically the same thing. Um, that's 42%, that's 62% of uh, Windows 10 PCs out in the world are running last year's, the last two versions, right? Uh, yeah, last last year's versions, the, which are the last two versions. Um, so, you know, Windows as a service, still a little burned by the whole thing, but it's, you know, <laughs> by not shipping major feature updates, all of a sudden it's coming together, yeah. you know, so. And another small one is in the beta channel now, right? Yes, 21H1 right, right. in the beta channel. So yeah, getting closer to nice that rolling out. But another tiny one, right? At like going to mm -hmm. be a pretty small cumulative update style. I need kind of I need it to be like that. I, I never I I can know. never For catch your up. Book. You know, nope. <laughs> yeah. I just need it. Oh, and you remember our conversation last week about why was everybody seeing a different look and feel for Windows Update? So I did ask Microsoft that question, and they haven't answered yet. <laughs> like, we have so, no idea. What are you talking about? I know. I, I asked again today, <laughs> and I'm like, so guys, remember that question about, like, why are we all seeing a different feel? And uh, Like, it's right. changing. Like, are you A-B testing? And they said, we've been really busy with Ignite News, and so we'll get back to you. So maybe next week. So we'll they're, they're absolutely A-B testing. There's uh, – because yeah. no, they are. I mean, there's, there's no other explanation. I think so, too. I do too. There are, I think there are, they must. There are two core things you could see, which is a header or not a header. But la as of last week, there were two different versions of the header. One is the one that happens mm -hmm. when you, I think you see it when you upgrade to a new version of Windows 10. And it says, hey, get started. There's a button you can click and then you go through a little, like a setup wizard. And when you do that, you get the actual header, which as of last week had three items on it. Since then, <laughs> you'll be happy to discover <laughs> there's another permutation of this thing that has four oh. items at the top. Oh, and man. I've seen that on one of my computers so far. You know, I'm, I wish I was. Um, yeah. So there's. And <laughs> there's meanwhile, like I'm another, seeing the old. I'm seeing the old style. Yeah. And yeah, I'm which on. It looks a too. lot like it might. As, <laughs> this could be from 2015 almost, except there's a couple of extra it does. items. Uh, it looks yeah. old. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I'm not saying I dislike it. It's just classic. <clears throat> I've been uh, seeing a therapist <laughs> since last week's show to try to get over this, <laughs> and um, I think we're making some headway, but. Are you feeling better? You're feeling good about this now? <laughs> I'm just more resigned, <laughs> I think, than anything. <laughs> yeah, so hopefully we'll get some answers. I also asked them uh, the question about, do pe is it simply people would look at Windows Update and suddenly get upgraded to the optional C and D releases? I asked that as well and also do not have an answer on that. <laughs> it's internally, they're like, she's on to us. 
Yeah. <laughs> oh, what do we say to this question? Yeah. Say something. You say something. I don't want to say something. Tell her we're busy with Ignite. <laughs> so maybe next week mm -hmm. we'll get an answer to that one as well. I've had a lot of yeah, people maybe. chiming in on Twit.community community and also in my email about this. And yeah. yeah, it's not that I'm running a pro version or anything. There's no logical reason why oh, no, we're no, all it's nothing like that. Oh no, I know it's not things. that. No, we're not. Yep. Ne so, we yeah. never figured it out, did we? No, and would, Microsoft I, hasn't I'll, responded. I so. will predict we will never figure it out. Yeah. That, that's my... The, uh, Whatever you know, in the uh, Twit forums at twit, uh, www.twit.community, yeah. long conversation thread. I know. Some people I have know. it. Some people don't have it. Oh, yeah. I know. Oh, nobody, I've got nobody a thousand understand. emails from people with yeah. photographs of what their version of settings yeah. look like. And, it's uh, funny. We really hit on something. <laughs> it's like a yeah. blue or gold dress, right? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's in the eye of the beholder. <laughs> I blame Bill Gates for that, too, by the way. <laughs> I blame him for everything. Yeah, it's everything all, I, you can. Uh, yeah. I don't Vaccines, think. Vaccines, yeah. chips. Yeah. Wow. It. No, he's a good man now. You don't, <laughs> you, he's been re rehabilitated. He's, he's no, done he better has. than Andrew Carnegie in rehabilitating himself. He's, wow. He's he quite, is a totally a, different that's, person. That's a, he is a totally and, and, and yeah, I'm actually <laughs> meaning to ask you that because yeah. on, I see him a lot now. He does a lot of news interviews and stuff. Yep. Yeah. And he's avuncular. He's funny. He yep. seems smart. I know. He's he cuddly. Seems kind. You understand this is a man who would have killed someone to get ahead. Yeah. So you <laughs> right? both like, had, had direct experiences yeah. with him in the good old days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is not the same Bill Gates. No. No. It's not and the when same people person. Say, <laughs> people say that people can't change. Look at Bill Gates yeah. before you yeah. come to a conclusion yeah. on that one, yeah. because that guy has completely Agreed. changed. It's really interesting. Yeah, Man. It's is it? Is it? I have uh, so many stories of him being like not a good guy when I had to work. Yeah. With well, him he had that <laughs> reputation. I mean, of just being a cutthroat. Yep. Um, was he unkind? Yes. Interesting. Yeah. He was. Do you <laughs> yes. think it's Melinda, I mean, he, his he, wife? Way, he that, matured late, uh, for one thing. I mean, he was, he was kind of a yeah. Yeah, he was kind of no, an adolescent. No, I think once socially. he had kids, he oh, started kids, changing. Maybe. Yeah, kids will better. do that to you. That's true. I feel like yeah. I feel like yeah. he became more human um, when mm -hmm. he started, like having so to realize that people Steve can't stay. <laughs> <laughs> no, like you know I mean, how oh there are all those stories of people sleeping under their desks during at Microsoft. Yeah, you can't during, do that oh, when you have kids. No, once yeah. he had kids, he's like, oh wait, this isn't a good idea, yeah, right? Like yeah. this is not healthy. So good. yeah, good. No, he's a, he's a different person now. Like I feel like I would actually like talking to him now, although I have no reason to talk to him anymore. But have, um, um, yeah, <laughs> it might be as simple as just getting out of Microsoft and leaving the day to day. I know that the um, you know the antitrust thing really was the final straw for him. Like where he was yeah. like, I just can't do this anymore. Like this yeah. is it kind of sucked the fun out of it. You know. Yeah. Um, you want to hear one of my funniest Bill Gates yes, stories? Yes, I would. I don't mm -hmm. think I've ever told this story on. On Twit. Um, <laughs> so one time when I was working for PC Week back in the day, and I used to have to talk to Bill Gates quite a bit, um, I was I was at Comdex, I think, and they were filming something with Bill Gates, and they had, I think it was Computer Associates, somebody from there and him, and they were being filmed, and I was standing to the side watching him be filmed. And then he saw me there, right, and he was mad about something I had written in that week's issue, so he yelled on on the stage. Foley, don't move. I'm coming over there in a minute. And I was like, what? That's awesome. <laughs> so I just started walking off. And one of his handlers is like, Mary Jo, Bill said he wants you to wait. And I said, I don't care what Bill said. He's not my boss. Like, oh. He's not the boss yeah, of me. Exactly. And there, everybody was like, oh. And I was like, guys, like, he's not my boss. I can, like, walk off the stage if I want to. And everybody was like, no, you got to wait for him. And I'm like, no, I'm not waiting for him. No. <laughs> Wow. And everybody was really like stunned that I had like crossed Bill Gates, you know. I was like, all right, whatever. <laughs> but that's the kind mm. of guy he was. He'd like just yell stuff out at you and just like tell you off. And I'm like, no, like, no. But now he, I don't think he would ever do that now, right? Like, I, I don't think that's his persona at all now. You guys would be Different singing guy. Kumbaya around a campfire and. Yeah. Exactly. Reminiscing. <laughs> it's, it's totally, it seems like a totally different person. Yeah, a totally, I totally different person. Okay, yeah. so I'm I'm really glad to know that because yeah, I'm I didn't I'm I've never met him or talked to him in, in either yeah. co context, but I certainly heard all your stories and everybody else's stories, 
Yeah. And uh, not easy to deal. <laughs> it's it, yeah. It's it's really. He was more like Steve Jobs, wasn't he? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Steve never reformed. He didn't get a chance, sad to say. You know, my now, sure. Steve might have been a different guy. They were the same I, yeah, age. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in fact, I fully would expect that, to be honest. His his wife, uh, Steve's yes, wife, Lorraine, is wife's amazing. Um, and I, did, I have spent time with both of them. And um, yeah, yeah. she's very, she's Bill Gates kind and warm and generous and very worldly in terms of wanting to make a difference and all that. And I bet you Steve would have come around eventually to that. Hmm. Yeah. But didn't have a chance. So that's why, folks, be good now. <laughs> you, I know. you may not have a chance to reform later. Why not later. get your chance? Yeah, I know. This, is, this is the time to be kind. It's true. Yeah. Um, all right, let's talk some hardware here. Yeah, just a couple of quick stories. Um, I don't quite understand this 100%, but Qualcomm announced, uh, I think it was last week, that maybe it was earlier this week, uh, they're starting a Snapdragon, Snapdragon Insider program. <laughs> It's like, what, what does that mean? You know, so like when you join the Windows Insider program, obviously you get pre-release versions of Windows. Like, what do you get? What do you get? The snap, you know, they're not going to send you chips, right? Um, and according, their description is very short. Um, behind the scene access, premium experiences and extra perks. Sounds a lot like the Windows Ultimate Extras that we never got from Windows Vista. Remember that? the All the mm -hmm. unnamed perks that were coming down the road that never came? I don't know. So, But if you're a, if you're an ARM enthusiast and uh, you are interested in Qualcomm and its products, I mean, uh, I, bet, I suspect um, for people who watch the show, this would be people who are interested in Windows 10 on ARM in particular. Might want to check it out. It's It's, right now, it's just a, Sign up on a website and you can follow them on Twitter and Instagram. And I have no idea what this means, but there it is if you want it. Um, and then the other one was just HP. HP, um, <laughs> I don't understand what this is. Like, we all know that there's a there's a calendar year, obviously, it goes from January to December. Uh, some companies, the first quarter of the year is their first fiscal quarter, and that's how their, uh, quarter, their uh, annual uh, fiscal year goes or whatever. But some some are switched. You know, Microsoft's fiscal year uh, starts on July first, right? So we are now in their third fiscal quarter. It is the first quarter of twenty twenty two calendar year twenty twenty one, right? Twenty twenty one. But we are in Microsoft's third fiscal quarter. Um, HP mixes it up even further. Uh, their their previous qu quarter went from November first until January. 31st for some reason. I don't know. Anyway, uh, that is, however, the holiday quarter. And not surprisingly, um, they had a record quarter and um, based largely on PC sales, right? So two thirds of uh, HP's business is PC sales. The other third is printing. Uh, both of them actually significantly up, go figure. Um, and then the way it worked with PCs, let me see if I can find this. Like, yeah, 10.6 10 billion of the 15 billion in revenues uh, was from PCs up 7% year over year. But unit sales uh, were up 15% in the quarter year over year. Uh, notebook sales up 33%, uh, which meant that desktop sales fell. So more people are buying notebooks, no surprise yeah. there. I, you know, I wonder if desktops have a future, huh, really. Maybe NUX. I'm looking down at my little NUC and I'm thinking <laughs> you're onto something because I do have some problems with this thing. But um, yeah. Right. I'm thinking, um, well, for instance, um, I, the, the iMac, and I have a lot of them, is kind of a bad solution because you're really tied <clears throat> to that monitor. And what has happened right. over the years is uh, that's not the best monitor. I would like a, you know, I want one of these yep. wide curved But the, ins monitors. the inside of it's fine. But the inside's fine. So I'm thinking yeah. maybe a Mac Mini or a you know, NUC style mm -hmm. device uh, would be smarter because then I could upgrade the monitors uh, as monitor upgrades. It's not just the monitor. Like um, You could add an eGPU and turn this thing right. into a gaming class, you see. Yeah. I mean, um, yeah. and by the way, you could do this with a laptop, but of course the laptop has that screen. Um, yeah, I think yeah. the idea mm -hmm. of, of... So that's the reason for... The only reason for the desktop form factor is to decouple the computer yeah. with the, the peripherals. The pieces from each other. That's yeah. right. Well, and now we have a... What is it? Framework is coming up with a modular laptop design, right? Um, mm -hmm. I thought that framework was interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So the, their whole idea it's an is interesting idea. Up, it's got to be upgradable. The yeah. problem is going to be it, all the modules will be sold by framework. This reminds me a little bit of Andy well, Rubin's Google Essential. Huh? Yeah. Well, even before Essential, remember Google had that modular PC thing they were yeah. working on. I'm uh, sorry, modular. No, no, the Aura phone. phone. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. That yeah, never yeah. came out, but the essential well, phone did, and you were relying on them for the little doohickeys. And of course, they went under, and so boom, that's it. So, but I like the idea. Well, Moto does this, uh, and nobody buys those either. But um, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Moto does. Well, I like yeah. I like the modular nature of the modular nature. Yeah, of. I think I'm going to get an, uh, a NUC. Well, I have a great yeah. NUC, by the way, uh, that I got years ago from System Seventy Six. Oh. I still use it like crazy as a PC. Oh, interesting. Uh, but I'm thinking the, from now on, maybe except for the you know the. The ones you want to carry around, the portables. Yeah. The, well, the latest uh, NUC should be out any day now, actually. It should be very soon, NUC, the NUC 11s. Yeah, and each, you might need a GPU because there isn't a lot of space in there for uh, a heavy Well, that's GPU. still a great... I mean, it, it's not... A, I mean, it makes more sense for a laptop in the sense that you can unplug it and take the thing to go. But, I mean... I, even in this situation, I wouldn't mind having an eGPU on the floor. Just in a way, it's a dock. Then, so you have yeah. the NUC, and then the G right. eGPU is a dock, and everything's. I mean, anyway, it just seems like a more flexible. Yeah. No, I like it. Uh, and by the way, the other aspect to that is you could upgrade the NUC. The NUC probably costs, you know, a bare bones NUC is probably three, five hundred bucks, whatever. You could keep the eGPU, keep your RAM, yeah, keep those your are modular, yeah, uh, SSD, and just yeah. replace the central processing. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind yeah. of. Kind it used to be really, that it used to be you don't get an all in one because if one part breaks the whole thing goes in, but yeah. people love it that there's no wires. It's very clean. It's simple. You know, yeah, it's, it's I, a it's I, I get it. kind of a living room PC. But I I'm going the other way now because I'm stuck. <laughs> I have an iMac Pro. It was a very very expensive iMac, and I'm stuck because yeah. I, oh yeah yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Well, what's what's the generation processor in that thing now? That you have, uh, it was a Xeon. Uh, I can't remember which oh, it's Xeon. A Xeon. Jeez. Yeah, wow, that's incredible. Okay. Oh well, that's it was a really a five thousand dollar computer. It was. Uh, yeah. Wow. wow. <laughs> yeah. It was not a good. In, it it, so it you turns out. Around, you go, <laughs> that's well, a, that's a, <laughs> yeah. Is it I like mean, a it was, double it's, it's processor my, thing or something? Yeah, it's yeah, my main desktop. Crazy. I can look it up for you. It was. It's my main desktop. So, but it's ironically, and this is why I'm interested in this whole dropping PC sales. I don't. I don't want to go in my office and sit down at the desktop anymore. Yeah. Kind of, uh, kind of the laptop well, I can use everywhere, including my office if I had to. Yeah. yeah it's I, a 10 I, core um, Xeon W in it. Three gigahertz, 10 cores, uh, um, one, one processor, 10 cores, hyper threaded, 64 gigs of RAM. But yeah. then it's got a Radeon Pro Vega 64 video card in it, which is completely out of date. Yeah. And there's nothing you can do about that. That's not a system re or a user serviceable no. part. It's got a nice 5K monitor built in. but So I have uh, external monitors. but So by the way, we are starting to see that on laptops, though, more and more serviceable parts, right? Uh, you can often replace like the SSD, the uh, the wireless card, sometimes the RAM, although that's less uh, common these days. But um, it's starting to make a little bit of a comeback, right? Yeah. And that would solve some problems. If that thing had a panel and you could pop that thing off and... Put a new Maybe that's the way to do it. Is have those be swappable? Yeah. Can you? Is a NUC good enough for gaming? So probably the new ones not. probably are. Because remember, really? this past year, um, uh, Intel has come out with the uh, what do they call it? Not Iris, but the um, uh, Iris Evo Pro graphics. Oh, there's uh, the, the even more Evo stuff. Advanced. So okay. this is like basically like a low end dedicated uh, graphics unit. Uh -huh. So yeah, probably. But the good news there is. You know, like 1080p gaming, right? So like basic gaming. And like then basic an eGPU and you can do more. eGPU right? would solve all your problems. Yeah. Although those aren't super inexpensive oh, as God, it turns no. out, yeah. especially now because you can't get a graphics So camera. really that's yeah, who's buying going to buy towers is a gamer. Probably. Yeah, but even still, I, I'd rather have a NUC and a eGPU than a tower personally. Uh, I, I know others probably wouldn't, but I like I just like the... Yeah, but I like you can't the external have the nature of it. Cool lighted like, fans and the LEDs and the glass case and you know the yeah. <laughs> you can't you, rice you get it. a couple of Philips Hue uh, yeah. blooms in the on corner the of your office or whatever. <laughs> um, uh, that was our hardware segment. Oh no, is there more? You want to do the age? No, that's it. That was it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That was our hardware segment. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> hey, speaking of that's which. All we got. Speaking of hardware, to next week, tell us about next yeah. week. Yeah, so next week uh, we're going to have two folks on from Intel uh, to talk about, actually about Intel Evo. Go figure the word I couldn't remember. Um, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and their efforts to uh, kind of counteract some of the marketing around Apple's M1 stuff, right? So, um, 
yeah, we're going to... We'll, and it's going to be we'll, Ryan Shroud, the longtime mm -hmm. editor-in-chief at PC Perspective, and of course, my our good buddy and the host of This Week in Computer Hardware for years on the network. So Yeah, yeah. yeah Ryan's uh, great. Ryan uh, will be... It'll be his triumphant return... His triumphant <laughs> return to Twitter. Wow. Yeah. To Twitter. Okay. Yeah. So I'm nice. I'm very excited about that. So next week, yeah. if you're interested in Halo, Halo. Mm -hmm. When I say Halo, Halo yeah. if you're just playing also Halo, Halo. We'll, we'll probably also talk yeah. about Halo. Uh, uh, Ryan Shroud. And Jeff, who's who's the other guy? Jeff Newman? Jeff. Oh, thank you for asking me that. Uh, yeah. Alan. <laughs> Alan, somebody. Anyway, Alan will be joining us and Ryan. It's not Alan. Next week. And we've already figured oh, out how to do a quad box. Nice. So you guys like Hollywood squares and stuff. Yeah, except you're gonna be really skinny. <laughs> you're, gonna, <laughs> you're gonna be jammed in really That's okay. side by side. side as by long side. as Alan my little Newman. window gets smaller and smaller every time, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. Alan Newman is gonna be. Uh, I'll be like, you'll basically see like one of my eyes up in the corner, <laughs> <laughs> picture in picture. <laughs> we actually have the ability to do now, thanks to the new TriCaster, like bubbles. So we could actually. Yeah, have, I want to be in a bubble. Yeah, I want you to bubble. hit me around the room so I bounce <laughs> off of things. Uh, not Alan Malventano. Um, uh, Newman. I, I don't Newman. think it's Alan. I'm sorry. I wish I... Something I Newman. It. Not Alan Malventano. Uh, although another another well-known uh, Twit regular. Uh, also working in Intel. Let's talk Xbox. I, uh, yeah, I want to look it up. I did my weekly... Refreshing Walmart, Target, Best Buy, Microsoft, everybody. Because yeah. I saw I on the verge about stock coming back. Yeah, I saw on the verge on uh, uh, Monday. They said, "Oh, they got stock." Like I got there an hour later, gone. You know, I'm willing to do a deal on a slightly used uh, Xbox Series X. I mean, really? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> but, yeah, don't tease me like that, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll get one, but I can send you an when. Xbox Series S if you want. No, I, mean, I have that. Oh, okay. <laughs> I need an X. I feel oh, like sorry. I feel the need for an X. You know what? I don't really need an X, but I I want I an X. I want one. Right. Xbox you. time, Paul Therott. Yeah, a couple stories. So uh, everyone remembers the disastrous introduction of uh, Halo Infinite last, I think it was August, where you and I remember did the live event and yep. we were like, what, <laughs> what the hell is Why this? Why does this look like this? <laughs> Um, so they delayed it a year, and uh, this past week they shared a little progress report, which I actually found very interesting because there's some uh, new screenshots and some conceptual art uh, for what they're working on. It looks way better than yeah. it did. Um, yeah. I like the idea that it, this is a spiritual reboot of the series. Um, so you can start all over. Maybe. We're going to be back back to the planet and do the whole thing. Yeah, I mean, look, well, look at look how familiar that looks, yeah, right? That's yeah. like one of those Halo ring worlds. Obviously, yeah, yeah. Um, I was. I this is obvious when you hear it. I just I read this and I thought oh, that's kind of cool. Um, the envi that environment is based on the Pacific Northwest where those guys all live. Right, <laughs> right, right. So they kind of you know made what they know. Um, this will be fun. But yeah, beautiful. Yeah, this will be fun. So this game, um, I, the, I think the year long delay is going to help quite a bit. Um, but it looks good, so that's that's good. And, I'm, I'm, and you quote them saying uh, some of the most open-ended play experiences in the history of Halo. Yeah, so not qu not quite open world. Well, no, I, I, I call it open world. It's open world-ish. I mean, obviously, there's a beginning and an end on any level. You got to get something done, whatever it is. But I guess it's a lot less of a rail shooter, as we'll call it. Um, good. It's an, it, I like an open, open environment. You can yeah. you can achieve those goals. I like those games yeah. better, frankly. And yeah, you yeah, need objectives. Do some exploring. You, you know. don't want to just be wandering around. No, that's the big problem I have with the open world. Yeah, games, but yeah, you need something. To if do. I wanted to walk around, you know, I could just do that in my yard. Um, <laughs> get lost. I don't know. Uh, when was this? I got, I think it was was it Thursday night last week, February twenty sixth. Let me see. That must be. I think it was Thursday night. Um, I don't typically play Xbox at night. Um, Thank God, because it was down for five hours. On Whoa! Thursday. Oh, that's it went down to about withdrawal. four o'clock, and yeah, four. And a, I guess five and a half hours. Yeah, and um, what am I going to talk to my world. family? What am I? I, I exactly. <laughs> Thank you. What am I going to do? Play like a board game, like <laughs> like it's the nineteen seventies. Um, so yeah, a lot of people were impacted, but the whole yeah. thing went down, like all of it. And wow. um, the the thing that's that's not funny. I'm sorry. Nothing. None of this is funny. But had you been signed into the console earlier, like I was. And you stayed online, you never would have been kicked out. But if you tried to get online at like five o'clock, oh. you were never getting in. So it was yeah. their um, 
It was a server that, you know, the lo the lobby server or something. Mistakes were made. Um, <laughs> it's fair to say. Anyway, it's back. And I, I'll just say good on the good news front, um, I don't know if anyone remember, remembers this, but back when the work from home start or, you know, the lockdown started last uh, March, Xbox Live had some tricky couple of days for a little while there. And then it kind of ironed out. And, you know, we don't really talk about this or think about it, but... Xbox was basically up for the duration ever since. Like, I, there were no other outages, nothing to speak of. So this is really the first time in about a year this has happened. So um, you can stop buying your Blu-rays and not worry about cloud services, guys. Everything's <laughs> fine. Um, anyway, it's back. Good. And uh, this is semi-minor because there aren't that many of them, but they just announced today the, the games that are coming in. the. Typically, they announce the first half of the month and then remember the second half at around the 15th. Um, there's only five or six of them, um, but there's a bunch of EA Play games coming, uh, some later on in the schedule, including in early April. But um, there's some really good games, like uh, EA Play games, especially NBA 2K21, 2K21, um, Star Wars Squadrons, NHL 21, 21, sorry, Madden 21. You know, it's just, it's... It's starting to heat up a little bit, so this is this is a nice this is a nice. I noticed of that some of that the NBA Two K Twenty One is labeled Cloud Plus Console. Does that mean X Cloud? Yeah. Yes. So, okay. yeah. So the 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 thing. So there's three there's three versions of Xbox Game Pass, right? So there's the console version, console, PC version, right, which you'll see as well, PC. And then there's uh, Ultimate, which is both. And uh, one of the things you get with Ultimate is that game streaming feature, which is xCloud. And that when nice. they say cloud, that's what they mean. Yeah. So that means you'll be able to stream like NBA 2K21. 2K21. I, I really have a hard time with that. How about anyway. 2K21? How do you like that? 21. There, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's just it's an awkward combination of yeah. characters. It's a lot of twos. Um, you will be able to stream that to your uh, Android phone for now. And then eventually, right. of course, Windows PCs, et cetera, et cetera. So, right. Yep. Cool. Yeah. The first X Pass, X, yeah. the Game Pass titles of Xbox Game Pass titles of March. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, coming up, the back of the book. The time has arrived for Paul Thorat's tip of the week. Here we are in the back of the book. So, Sony announced yesterday, I believe, that they are going to kill their movie and TV store in the PlayStation store. Oh. This is not really a surprise. Um, yeah, because who buys movies sort of, anymore, right? Well, yeah, well, <laughs> that's the thing. I mean, I, uh, and they, that's what they said. Like, we've seen a big shift in the way customers, be, you know, consume video. Obviously, they're going to services, Netflix and Hulu and so on. And yeah, I'm sure most people are. But I, I mention this only because Microsoft has a similar service. And um, if we're being honest with ourselves, I mean, ever since they announced it, we've been waiting for them to shut it down. And I fully expect them to at some point. Um, they shut down their music service. Obviously, Groove is gone. But this movies and TV thing is still around for some reason. And the reason we know Microsoft isn't serious about it is because it's only available on Xbox and the PC, right? And most people, if you're going to buy content like this, would want to watch it on a TV, <laughs> which I guess you could do it through an Xbox, uh, or on the go, um, like on a mobile device. Like, you know, most people probably use an iPad or a phone or something. So my expectation is that this thing isn't going to last. And I've been advising uh, users for years not to buy content from Microsoft. Some of it can go into that Movies Anywhere system so you can access it from other devices. That's helpful, but it's not all of it. And in my experience, it's been about two-thirds of it. So uh, you just don't want to get stuck with that. Um, so I think this is a cautionary tale, <laughs> but it, the the one thing that Sony is doing correctly, which I think is the right thing to do for customers, is they're going to allow any previously purchased content to be available going for the foreseeable future. So if you have a PlayStation 4 or PlayStation 5 or a mobile device, and I don't know what that means. They must have a mobile app. I'm not really aware of this, but you'll be able to watch the content you've already purchased. And that's maybe the right approach. Um Hopefully Microsoft does something like this. Um, I'm trying to think of what the... Remember when Microsoft very briefly had an ebook store, right? That was part of Microsoft Edge. Um, one of the things that they did, I think the way they handled that, it was probably because the money amounts were kind of small, is they gave people um, refunds, basically, right? Uh, they could move your content to a different service. They, they did a deal with uh, Spotify when they got rid of Groove to move your playlist over to Spotify, for example. So... 
We'll see when and if this happens. I mean, by the way, it could last for a long time. I have no idea, but my expectation is that it won't. And hopefully, if Microsoft does get rid of movies and TV, they will uh, pull a Sony, <laughs> I guess, to do the right thing. But we'll see. When, when and if that bridge ever comes. Um, oh, but what's the tip? Um, the tip is don't buy <laughs> movies or TV shows from my <laughs> movies and TV. There's a tip. Um, don't buy them. Don't, don't, don't do it. Look, I have purchased a lot of movies digitally in my life. I happen to purchase them on Apple. Um, I do that for a variety of reasons. They actually have the best uh, special feature type thing, like the iTunes uh, extras or whatever. Yeah, that's why I'm still buying them, because I like the extras. Yeah, I like that. And by the way, big pet peeve of mine, uh, Apple TV Plus is available on, everywhere, basically, except Android right now. They don't let they don't let you access the extras. So if you want to see that stuff, you have to have an Apple. Oh, device, that's like an Apple TV. Now I use yeah, the movies cool. anywhere, formerly Disney movies. Yes, anywhere, and so. that will bring over. It's not it's not every studio, right? So yeah, uh, and it's not even every movie within every studio. But in in my experience, I've gotten about two thirds of the movies I purchased from Apple are available through that system, and they're available in other places. So yeah, that makes it so you can bad. watch it on your Xbox or somewhere else, which is yeah. nice. I yeah. think that's really nice. You can rent a movie anywhere. Who cares, right? Like if you if you happen to use a laptop and you want to use the Microsoft thing, no problem. I mean, obviously, you're just going to rent it and watch it once. It doesn't matter. Uh, but if you're going to buy a movie, uh, you know, maybe buy it from a place that you think is going to be around for a while. <laughs> you know, Here's Apple. how they get me. They get me There's because one. the rental's four ninety nine, and sometimes you can buy mm -hmm. it for six ninety nine. Yeah, and you're like, would I watch this more than once? If there's even the remotest possibility, yeah. a couple of like, bucks, yeah. eh, why not? Yeah, I do the same thing. Yeah, and then I have you know this library else? of it's movies I never watch, so it's fantastic. You know yeah. So here's the here's the this is not a scam, but this is what this is what I've noticed because I do the same thing. I'll be I'll look at it, like every Tuesday they update the the movies and stuff. And I look at what's new, and like these days, it's nothing, right? The last year for movies has been terrible. I think we can all agree to that. But but they have sales, right? And so there'll be like these movies for four ninety nine, like oh, and I, I I'd have to make up titles. I don't remember. I haven't bought one in a while. Yeah, it would be some great movie. You're like I'll yeah. definitely watch this more than once. So yeah. you like click buy it. You're like oh, this is not. And then you you buy like three or four movies. Yeah. And then you go over to like uh, one night I'm looking at like Amazon Prime Video or maybe I'm looking at Hulu, and then those same movies are now available for free on those services. I know. And that's why they're for sale. <laughs> it's oh. like, I've, I have done this multiple times. Like the movies hit some bargain yeah, but they, bin for but, content. But, but they know. come and go. So, you know, even though you can get to watch it on Cinemax for a few okay. months, they're going to go that's away. That's true. That's true. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. I, I don't know why, but I anticipate that someday I'll be stuck in a snowstorm on a mountain in a log cabin. And yes. I'll be so glad I have 300 Oh, let me give you movies. the scenario. I've said this to my wife. Like someday yeah. we're going to retire, right? Yeah. And one of the things I hope to do is like maybe spend a year driving around the country in an RV or something, you know? When we do that, I'm going to have this like hard drive or it's something exactly. that has every movie I've ever purchased <laughs> downloaded to it. And we're not going to worry about being connected to the internet. Like uh, the, I will, if there's a purchase I made in 1999 that I, I never watched or whatever, this is going to be the time it happens. That's exactly right. So that's that's hysterical. Um, it's an investment in the future. Really, <laughs> it's what it is. I have, it's part of my retirement yeah. fund. Yeah. Yeah, and just like Bill <clears throat> Gates, uh, we're probably <laughs> never going to get to use these, or Steve Jobs. Yeah. We're planning for a future that will never happen. I know. Now, you mentioned when you were doing your coding uh, that you have used Flutter, which is Google's cross-platform yeah. mobile yep. development uh, tool. And did you yeah. like it? I can't remember. I think you like it. I do it. like it. I yeah. like it quite a bit. It's, it, it is it um, is different enough from what I'm used to that the, I, the, the bar is a little uh, high for learning it. it it's... Um, I, I don't know how to explain this. It, it's um, the the language it's it's based on is called Dart. It's another C like language that's very familiar. There's there's that aspect to it. But the, the way you structure, uh, you write code to structure UI, and it's um, it's uh, everything's a widget, and so it's like widgets wrapped in widgets wrapped in widgets, and it's um, I think it's the type of thing once you get used to it, you're like oh my god, this is incredible. Is it, but when you is come, it, is it model view controller or something like that? Do you know that that, uh, that yeah framework? yeah yeah no, that, yeah it's um, that's kind of how I would understand those widgets like they're the view right. yeah. and you and you, you so know. I'm gonna jeez uh, they don't have MVVM exactly but okay I geez, I feel like I'm not I'm not I'm not gonna say anything intelligent I don't want to okay. say I, I'm not really sure okay so I I, I, I you can. I'm not an expert in this, so I don't want to say yes or no to that. I'm not really All sure. Right. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. 
Uh, it's it, just, it's so different. Even I, by the way, I find evil John even says Swift and, uh, and apparently he's using flutter. It's a component based yeah. architecture closer to the react model. Okay. It is yeah, definitely more like, yeah. Cause yeah. you're structuring like, it's almost like a web page. Yeah. Know, the way you yeah, build yeah. these things. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's good. That helps. Yeah. yeah I you can, that. yeah, I, I like, I don't, I don't want to get down. I don't want to go down this rabbit hole. I really just don't know enough about it. I found it to be very confusing, but really compelling. Um, and Flutter started out as a mobile framework, right? So originally the idea was you'd write one app and it could run on iOS. Yeah, that's how I kind of understood it. But it's more than that Native-ish, you know, yeah. controls and so forth. Um, but they have bigger plans for Flutter. And uh, over time, they've been adding support in pre-release form for the web and then for desktop platforms, Linux, the Mac, and uh, Windows. And today they released Flutter 2, which is the first version to have a stable version of the web, su uh, web support. So you can now write Flutter apps for the web or port existing apps to the web, right? And they can be progressive web apps, they can be single page apps, or they could just be, you know, uh, Flutter mobile apps that have been ported over. Um, so not like document-based, um, like websites or whatever, but like web apps, right? Um, and this is this is very interesting to me. Um, and I talked to I talked to uh, Tim Sneath, who's a former Microsoft guy from the Dev Div stuff, uh, who came over to run this program shortly after it started up at Google, and uh, he's awesome. He's a really, really nice guy. But, um, you know, their goal is for this thing to target anything that has a screen, you know, um, Toyota is using it in their cars, wow. Ubuntu, all of the new apps are canonical. Uh, all the new apps that uh, ship for Ubuntu Linux are going to be written in this, uh, including the new installer uh, that they have to install the operating system. Microsoft is using it. Uh, this has been part of, part of the announcement was Microsoft is working with them on uh, folding displays. Uh, specifically on Android in that case. And um, yeah, so I think I'm going to... Oh, and here's, here's one for you. Uh, it has a technology called Dart FFI, which is a foreign function interface, which allows Flutter, to, uh, Flutter developers to access C-based APIs, including the Win32 API, which means on Windows, you could write an app that accesses any native API if you wanted to. Um, and that's really interesting. And for the web, you can actually, this thing compiles behind the scenes uh, to JavaScript. So it's not like a, it's not like ActiveX or, you know, Flash or something. It's native. It's na on each platform, it's literally native code. Um, so yeah, I think I was originally going to go web next uh, for my next developer thing, but I think now I'm going to go Flutter. Now that Good. Flutter does this. Yeah, oh, cool. Uh, give it another try. I want to, I want to, I'm very curious. Yeah. There's a, a second app pick. Oh, yes. Um, <clears throat> right. So this is kind of interesting, right? People are probably aware of Brave, which is this uh, web browser, you know, cr Chromium based privacy, uh, strong on privacy, anti tracking, et cetera, ad, blo uh, ad blocking, all built in, that kind of stuff. Um, they just bought a small open, I think it's, I don't know, open source, but open, uh, search engine, which unlikes things like DuckDuckGo or whatever, does not rely on other search engines like Bing or, or Google search. And they're building it into the browser and they're making, eventually will be available to anybody, I would imagine. Um, it's interesting, <laughs> you know? I mean, Brave Brave is one of those things like I, I kind of tiptoe right on the edge of, like, I, I, I want to use this thing. It's a little, it's... It's right. It's almost. It's right there. And like, I this is this is interesting. I, this is something to keep your eye on. I guess uh, this might put me over the top. I mean, I love Brave and I yeah. use it, but yeah. uh, on on Mac I use Safari, Windows I use Edge. I like to use the native mm -hmm. tools. Yeah. On yeah, Linux, I'm using Firefox because it's open source and it has a lot mm -hmm. of the tools I want. But I could see using Brave. I did for a while use Brave exclusively. Yeah, no, it's pretty good. I'm, I feel it's, like I'm. I'm orbiting it. You know, like right. I'm, gonna, yeah, I'm eventually going to get pulled in yeah, you know? in the Brave orbit. Yeah. Uh, um, and then having its own search engine, by the way, there's uh, Brendan Ike saying uh, they may, in fact, probably will have it be paid, yeah. which in a way I kind of support. Um, I, right. li I kind right. of think, good, that means they won't be tracking me, or one hopes that means well, that they can uh, yeah, afford they not to track me. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're, um, uh, yeah, it's an interesting company. I, I feel like there's a, a broader movement to kind of get away from what the web has become or the internet has become. Right. This is definitely part of it. You know? Right. Um, it's a small part. This is one like most people have never even heard of, but I mean, it's, it's, it's not as out there as like Tor or whatever. It's, it's, it is Chromium. I mean, the Google Chrome, uh, extensions all work. Uh, 
uh, you know, I I've interviewed B Crypto, their uh, their security uh, guru. Um, I trust her; she's smart. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I I think it's probably a good choice. You know, I I uh, yeah. If you need to, let's put it this way: I'd prefer to use it than Chrome. Right. Uh, Although, by the way, if you want some high comedy today, if you're in a, if you're in a good mood, please go read Google's blog post about how they want to have a well. That was privacy based. What do you think of that? <laughs> they say they're not going to uh, they're not going to uh, use your oh, search give me a break. I search I, for this, uh, <laughs> tracking anymore, or at least going forward at some point. You don't I, buy it. I no. <laughs> You think they got I, I, some other secret method that uh, will do this? Well, first of all, you got to understand, Google is working hand in hand with the advertising industry, right? They, they, they. What Google wants is there to be a standard for advertising. They want right. to make sure they're part of it. And yes, if it makes sense, what what they're trying to do is walk this line that doesn't exist, right? On the one hand, they're the needs of their users, who increasingly are becoming more educated about this tracking and the ill effects of it, and don't want to be tracked. Believe they're being tracked. They are being tracked. Mm -hmm. And then they have their real customers, which are the advertisers. 80% of the revenues come from advertising. These guys are tracking the hell out of people, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. We're using the data that Google provides them. And what they're saying is we can have both. <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah, can you? Yeah. I don't know. So yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. Interesting. I don't All use right, this is kind of like, this was the part of the concert where uh, we had the drum solo and uh, mm -hmm. the lead guitarist went off to play <laughs> cards. And now, and now no, the drum solo is over. Yep. And now it's time for Mary Jo Foley. <laughs> <laughs> I expect you to jump off the drum riser, do a split. No, you're the drummer. I've already been, no, I already fed Sirachi. We played. We had some time together. You had lots of time. Yeah. Lots of time. All right. Enterprise <laughs> pick of the week. Mary Jo Foley. So um, this is an interesting site. Um, it's all about Azure deprecations. So, you know, there's like something like 6,000 different Azure services now, if you kind of break them up into individual piece parts. And like anything of that nature, Microsoft uh, perpetually is degrading and deprecating various services. There's an account on Twitter called at Azure End of Life. Um, it's run by Tom Kirkove. I may be mispronouncing your name if I am, sorry. Um, this site points to a GitHub site um, that he also is maintaining. And this tells you all the Azure services that Microsoft has put out a notice that they're going to be deprecating and when they're going to be deprecating them. Oh, that's good so to know. It's very handy. Like in the past seven days, there's 32 deprecations of Azure services impacting 20 distinct services. So if you're somebody who is working with Azure and you want to try to keep on top of this, uh, you know, so that it's not one day you're using a service and you're finding out, oh, they're deprecating this like next week or tomorrow. <laughs> and you want to actually have some heads up on this and you may have things fall through the cracks. This site would be your friend. So it's called, again, on Twitter, at Azure End of Life. And it points to a GitHub site where he is maintaining uh, a list of all these different deprecations and the dates. Very That's handy. very handy. It is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Uh, code name pick of the week. So our friend, the walking cat, has been chasing a whole bunch of code names. And it's funny, he's been asking me about them uh, publicly and privately, if I know what any of these things are. And it turns out now we know what a bunch of these are. So he thinks Microsoft Mesh's code name was Salvador. Um, <laughs> That's a funny is, code name. <laughs> well, if you know, Alex Kipman's Brazilian, right? That's and right. Okay. Salvador okay. is a city in Brazil, I believe. Okay. So it could be that. Um, he believes the Microsoft Mesh app for HoloLens, which they announced this week, was codenamed Phoenix, F-E-N-I-X, or Catalonia. And again, if you look up Phoenix, it also is a region in Brazil, so it could be that. Um, I asked him if he knew what the Microsoft Mesh um, Alt Space VR app was codenamed, and he said, I have no idea on that one. But he does think that Another code name that both he and I were looking for, Bell's Beach, which is in Australia, I believe, um, is possibly the code name for holoportation. 
which is very interesting. So holoportation is the idea of you appearing as a fully realized hologram like Alex Kipman and James Cameron were on the stage at Ignite this week. Um, and again, like I mentioned, that, that capability is not yet in the Mesh developer platform, but it's coming. So yeah, that walking cat, he's good on the code names. He finds them all. That's cool. Salvador, yeah. you're right. It's uh, it's the capital of Bahia. Yeah. So yeah. that could be why they... So he he uses um, Brazilian, Brazilian names, names yeah. a lot. Yeah. In Salvador is supposed to be beautiful, actually. I'd like to go to Salvador mm. sometime. Mm. Uh, yeah. And Phoenix. I don't know. Yep. That's F-E-N-I. Yeah, it's another region in Brazil. Oh, it it's is? also okay. um, It's also, I believe, a maybe Brazilian spelling or some kind of a spelling for Phoenix, like P-H-O-E-N-I-X. Right. right. Yeah. Rising from the dead. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> They're back. Um, but yeah, lots of good code names. It, it, you know, the reason I watch code names so closely is when you find sometimes a code name in a particular family of products, it helps you find other code names in the family. It tells you a little something about their interrelationships. It does. Yeah. And digs, dig, helps you dig out questions and comments right. and relationships. Right. It's very handy. Plus, it's fun. It's fun. It's fun. <laughs> it's a tour of the world. It is. So uh, I, uh, I was trying to find the um, delirium... Um, Brew you mentioned last label. week, and I couldn't yeah. find that, but I did get the pink elephant, the D oh, delirium nice. tremens. That was yeah. quite also delicious. delicious. Yeah, but not it a dark is. beer. I don't know why I thought it would be like a, a yeah. darker beer. It's, it's more like, like amber, right? Yeah, it's yeah. like almost like an IPA. It's very good. Yeah. I thought it was delicious. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I and I uh, passed it's out. Like a Hefeweizen almost. Yeah, it's like a Hefeweizen. Yeah. It's very light. Yeah, yeah. Uh, passed out, and I don't remember what happened <laughs> after that. But, yeah. <laughs> well, did it work? I, I think it's like nine percent, right? It was <laughs> so pretty strong. Like, yeah, I felt like yeah. I had a cocktail. Uh, <laughs> but we are ready for another beer pick, if you will. I know. Also, kind of a big beer pick, but its name is very appropriate oh, yes, for being it a is. big beer yes, pick. Yes, it is. <laughs> right. Um, so, Foam Brewers. If you've never heard of them, they're a very famous craft brewery in Burlington. They have a new beer out called Zero Day. <laughs> Perfect. That's funny. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, double IPA. It's uh, the beer that hits you before you even know you drank it. Exactly. And suddenly <laughs> you're on the ground. Right? <laughs> yeah, 9.2%. That's pretty big for a double IPA. That's more like in triple territory. Yeah, yeah. Um, nugget hops, crystal hops. Uh, people describe it as tasting like papaya and melon. So papaya. all those good wow. Yeah, wow. deli yeah, I've had beers that taste like papaya, and I really like them. Um, mango and papaya both are big in craft beer flavors. Uh, but I love the name, and I, I think I may try to get one of these just to have a can with the name on it. <laughs> Burling from Burlington, Vermont. You know, we didn't talk about the four zero days Microsoft announced yesterday. Oh, yeah, for Exchange, right? For Exchange <laughs> Server. Uh, we yeah. actually broke into, Steve Gibson broke into security now to say, patch your server. Uh, yeah. yeah. For, by the way, they patched uh, Exchange 2010. Wow. That's oh, how, they did? Wow. I mean, wow. yeah, that's crazy. Microsoft said the Chinese government, they believe, had already started, or Chinese hackers had already started using yeah. them. So. Actually, if you haven't patched, patch now. Patch now. <laughs> or, by the way, just a quick follow-up on the Flutter thing, because I... I, I, I Obviously, was very confused because uh, I don't recall this being a thing. And it, as it turns out, Flutter doesn't specify a design pattern of any kind. Oh, so you do what you uh, want. It's up to the developer to choose what they want to use. Okay. And as it turns out, because uh, I, I, I didn't say it this way, but you you create code uh, for the UI which is declarative, that makes it an ideal candidate for using MVVM or any oh, similar design okay. pattern. So perfect. You can structure it that way if you yeah. want. To, yeah. Do you have to learn Dart? I guess you do. Yeah, but it's not so much the language. Dart as a language is very familiar, right? If you use Java or okay. C plus plus or C sharp or whatever, it's the it's that declarative way of coding the the widgets that's new, and that that's that to new. me was a, yeah. a, a, a big uh, yeah. Dart looks just like bridge C plus plus or Java's got yeah. Colons, it's very, that, the, the language itself statement. is familiar. The way yeah. you use it in Flutter is unusual. Curly braces, that whole thing. Yep. Mr. Paul Therott, Ms. Mary Joe Foley, it has now come to my attention that the show mm -hmm. is over. 
Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have been alerted. <laughs> the, 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 we have completed. People are saying they're telling me. I see it on Twitter. The Walking Cat saying, "I hear the show is over." <laughs> People are walking by saying, "Why are you still here?" <laughs> You'll find Mary Jo at allaboutmicrosoft.com. That's her ZDNet blog. Paul's at uh, therot.com. That's his blog, and of course, um, his books are at uh, leanpub.com. Uh, we do this show every Wednesday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1800 UTC. I would love it if, you, uh, if you're if you going to watch live, and there is a live audio and video stream available to you at twit.tv slash live any time of the day or night. And if you're doing that, I would love to see you in the chat room at irc.twit.tv, people interacting with the live experience. If you listen uh, to it as a podcast, after the fact, we also have, as I've mentioned, Twit Forums at www.twit.community. Mary Jo pops in from time to time there. Uh, we have our own uh, Mastodon instance, which is a, a federated Twitter-like platform I'm just a big fan of at twit.social. Um, both of those places I hang out in every single day. So uh, your comments and suggestions are welcomed there. People say, why don't you have comments on YouTube? Really? Really? You have to ask that question? Have you seen comments have you on YouTube? seen comments on YouTube? <laughs> so yeah. uh, we are, there is a YouTube, Windows Weekly YouTube channel. You can go there. There's a Twit channel as well, uh, youtube.com slash twit. You can go there for links to all the other channels. But we, yeah, we turned off comments, but that's why we have the forums. Uh, because right. I have a little more control, a little more moderation ability, uh, both on the forums and twit.social. So join us there. Uh, you can get our uh, the show at twit.tv slash ww. Of course, download audio or video. We've got both. And uh, subscribe, actually. That'd be the best thing to do in your favorite podcast client, whether it's uh, you know Pocket Casts or uh, Windows or Mac or Linux or whatever you use. Do review us, though, if you uh, decide to subscribe, because those reviews really help us build audience. And that's a nice thing. Thank you, Paul Thorat. Thank you, Mary Jo sure. Foley. Have a wonderful week. Uh, next week, Intel joins us. Should be a yes. lot of fun. Ryan Shrout uh, mm -hmm. will be here. So and the other guy and the other guy <laughs> that other name. guy whatever his name is that guy. <laughs> it was in the notes, but you deleted it. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm sorry. It's okay. It's okay. I probably could undo the delete. But I think it's going to be a surprise. That's the that's the point. It'll be fun. You'll never know yes. who will show up next week as we talk about the new uh, Intel Evo platform. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you next time on Windows Weekly. Bye-bye. Hey, folks. Thanks for tuning in to another show here on the Twit Network. If you are a fan of home automation, Internet of Things, and all things smart technology, you should check out my podcast, Smart Tech Today. I do it with Matthew Casanelli, and we have so much fun talking about all the latest news for all things smart tech.